Title, My class was transferred, but I was the only one reincarnated as an FPS, First Person Shooter, Player. Volume 02, Completed. Author, Azora Kantsu O. Volume 02 Chapter 00. Two weeks after the incident in Gosis, I, Duke Nelson Deer Valdek, found myself organizing the documents related to that event. No discrepancies in the documents. Just need to stamp them. I muttered to myself. Taking the seal in hand, I made sure to apply enough vermilion ink to ensure a clear impression on the paper. Slowly and meticulously, I pressed the inked seal onto each document. Phew, with this, the work regarding this incident comes to a close. After stamping each document, I double-checked them one by one to ensure no seal was missed. Once satisfied, I bundled them together and placed them beside another stack. My brother mentioned continuing the investigation on this matter at the national level. He's probably just as busy as I am, I mused. After arresting Grubert and ensuring the integrity of the Gosis branch of the Comprehensive Guild, I returned to the capital city for report writing purposes. Within these two weeks, judgments had been passed on the three main culprits apprehended in Gosis. According to the international law established in intercontinental agreements, Grubert Langod was sentenced to death for the crime of illegal slave trading, regardless of his status. However, considering his cooperation in the investigation of this case and his sincere confession, his sentence was mitigated to the revocation of his title, confiscation of his assets, and exile from the continent of relevant. During the trial, Grubert himself pleaded for the death penalty, stating, I've gone this far. I deserve to be executed. To which the judge responded, If you truly feel remorse for your crimes, live a righteous life without forgetting that conscience, and strive not for yourself but for others. It was reported that Gruber kneeled on the spot, expressing gratitude through tears upon hearing the judge's words. The former chairman of the Bluma Slavers Association, Rajiv Splema, who had collaborated with Gruber in illegal slave trading, was sentenced to death for the same crime. Despite protesting, why am I sentenced to death when Langut is only exiled? And attempting to appeal, he was unable to do so due to lack of funds. All his ill-gotten gains had been seized by the state, leaving him penniless, and thus his death sentence was confirmed. He was scheduled to be executed along with his accomplices the following weekend. As for the third culprit, the former adventurer's guild master, Detter, he was stripped of his title and sentenced to hard labor in the dangerous mines for attempted assassination of the relevant comprehensive guild chairman, previous Lord of Gosis, and numerous other crimes. However, a problem arose. It was unexpected that the remaining members of Detter's group were found dead in the woods with their throats slit, I remarked. According to our soldiers' records, they were killed by bandits, but, could it be true? Would Elrina say the same thing as the Ritgilm soldiers if I asked her? I should tell Elrina about this, I decided. Come to think of it, when we parted ways, she was invited by girl to join the knights in the capital. She declined saying, I appreciate the offer, girl, but I want to live freely for now. But don't worry, I plan to come to the capital once I've saved up enough money. Freedom. She probably prefers adventuring over becoming a knight. All right. I retrieved a blank sheet of paper from the drawer and picked up a pen. I decided to send a letter to Elrina and Gozis to inquire about the opinions on the demise of Detter's remaining members. Perhaps she would offer a different perspective from the soldiers. Once I finished writing the letter, I rang the bell on my desk to summon a servant. After a brief wait, I heard a knock on the door. Enter, I called out. The door opened, and Meld, the butler, entered the room, bowing respectfully. Do you require something, Lord Nelson? I've written a letter to Elrina in Gosis. Please arrange for it to be delivered through the Comprehensive Guild in Gosis, I instructed. Gosis, you say. Just earlier, we received a letter from the Guild Master of the Gosis Comprehensive Guild addressed to you. Meldon informed me. What? Is there something else happening? I inquired. I haven't read the contents of the letter myself, so I'm not sure, but I believe it's not an urgent matter. Unlike the previous letter, this one is neatly written, not hastily scrawled, Meldon replied. I see. I accepted the letter Meldon handed me and broke the seal to confirm its contents. Oh. So. Elrina is coming to the capital. Excellent. I should inform Ger and the others. They'll surely be delighted. So, should I cancel the letter to Gosis earlier and inform Lord Hondu that Lady Elrina is heading to the capital? Yes, please do, Merlin. Understood. With those words, Merlin excused himself at the door and left the room. Now, when Elrina arrives, should I inquire about the remnants of Detter's faction before expressing gratitude for that time? Also, 
My wife expressed a desire to meet Elrina. I must arrange for them to meet, but... Is it okay? My wife and I... Knock, knock. Come in. Excuse me. Huh? Merlin. He just left a moment ago. Did he assign the task I requested to another servant? No. But he's too meticulous to do such a thing. What is it? Lady Amy Lister of the Second Knights just informed me that Lady Elrena has arrived at the capital. So Elrena has already arrived. Huh? She will attend to her matters at the guild before heading here. I see. Understood. Is everything all right, sir? Merlin looked at me with concern. It's all right. No need to worry. But isn't it unfortunate that this happened at such a bad timing? Is today an unlucky day? Well... It's good that it saves us some trouble. There's nothing unfortunate about it. If you think of it positively, Lady Elrena coming to Lord Nelson's mansion is rather fortunate, isn't it? Well, it's all about perspective. Indeed. Well then, I'll bring some tea. Ah, please do. After saying so, Merlin left the room again. But is it just my imagination that Elrena arrived at the capital quite early? Didn't we just receive this letter? I took out my pocket watch and checked the time. It's half past nine. If she came by a shared carriage, it would take a bit longer. But what if she didn't use a shared carriage and went to the stable to borrow a horse? Borrowing a horse is a bit expensive, but it's faster than a shared carriage. Huh? Come to think of it, when we parted ways, she said, besides, I can't ride a horse. So, with a wry smile, then how did she come all the way from Gozas to the capital, which takes almost four hours on foot? Did Elrina lie to me about not being able to ride a horse? I concluded so. Besides, if she managed to come here without any issues, then how she got here from Gozas to here shouldn't be my concern. Well then, after I finish my tea, I should prepare to greet her. Nelson leaned back in his chair, gazing out of the window at the garden scenery awaiting his tea. Volume 02 Chapter Row 1 Good morning. I arrived early at the Comprehensive Guild as usual and greeted the staff. Good morning, Arlena San. Good morning. You're here again today. It's been two weeks since the Gru Belt incident, and I've learned quite a bit about this world. Thanks to the guidance of the goddess Meltina Sama, I've learned how to wash my hair and body properly, how to put on underwear, and even some manners for dealing with girls. Well, I don't pay much attention to manners, though. Also. The lordship of Go's ace has been decided for a relative of Langut. Why did it go to a relative of Langut? Well, there were three other candidates for the lordship of Go's ace, but they had their problems. They had debts. They were spendthrifts. They lacked popularity. Can we really entrust Go's ace, one of the important exchange points of the country, to these guys? There were rumors circulating questioning their suitability, so they were excluded from the competition for lordship. They of course protested but their appeals were in vain. Instead, upon hearing the negative rumors, the king ordered soldiers to search their homes. Two of the three were arrested, and the remaining one had their title revoked. It was quite an unexpected outcome. And, what I'm currently concerned about is this. Good morning, Arlena. Hey everyone. Our benefactor Arlena is here today too. Arlena San. Good morning. You look beautiful today as well. Arlena San. Would you like to have tea with me? I know a great place. What are you saying? Let's go on a date. Right? Right? Kai ah ah. Lady Arlena is right in front of me. Lady. Let's go on a quest together. I rely on you, lady. Uh, um, I am. A fan of yours. Arlena San. Please shake hands with me. Arlena Chan. Please come to my end. I'll provide special services for you. I love you. Please marry me. Lady, I long for the night. Will you join me in bed? Please tread on me with those beautiful feet of yours. Ta. Ta. Insult me as a despicable pig. Towards the end, there are some oddities, but it seems I've gained some fans. How did this happen? Well, after the Gru Belt incident, I was held as a hero who saved the city by the Comprehensive Guild and the citizens. Plus, someone who was at the scene went ahead and established a fan club for me without my consent, and that's how I got fans. Though they're few. When I consulted the goddess about what to do, she said it's best for me to remain as I am. Everyone likes you just the way you are, she said. She had a good point. And then she went on to say, besides, if you do things like that, your fans will increase, won't they? So, five days ago, some merchant somewhere took an interest in my weapon. Sell me that weapon. I'll pay as much as you want, he said. I explained to him why I couldn't sell it and declined, but whether he couldn't understand or was just stupid, I don't know. He got angry and ordered his three guards to capture that woman and take her weapon by force, but I defeated them with my combat skills. Soon after, Soldiers arrived and took them away to the guardhouse. Up to this point, 
It's a normal story, but according to the goddess, after defeating the three in combat, she said something like, I won't sell anything to someone who does such things in front of everyone in the city, which is why this happened. She said if she hadn't said that one word, it wouldn't have gone this far. That's what she said. Also, I heard yesterday that the merchant was arrested for theft because he had done similar things elsewhere, stealing from people. Sigh. I guess I should greet these people at least. You um. Good morning, everyone. The fans who had been quarreling until just now suddenly stopped and lined up neatly before bowing their heads to me. Good morning, Arlena-san. Even though they were just fighting a moment ago. I'm not sure if they're getting along or not, it's kind of confusing. Shut up. You guys, do you want to get kicked out of the guild for causing a ruckus every single day? Oh, it's Barbos San. He came at just the right time. Good morning, Barbos San. Ah, good morning. Or not. Arlena, please do something about them. They're making noise every day inside the guild, bothering everyone. They're saying things like, let's go see a play. Or today, the comprehensive guild is peaceful again. I'm hearing complaints from people around here. Isn't it alright for you to say that last bit, Barbossa's sin? But there's something I need to tell you before that. Well, do you have something to say so early in the morning? Well, go ahead, I can guess. Barbossa, who had been scratching his head with a frown until just now, straightened up and looked at me. I guess he can anticipate what I'm about to say. Yes, I've come to bid farewell since I'm heading to the capital now. Bish. Wait, did I hear something weird just now? Nah, must be my imagination. Ah, so you're off to the capital already. That means you'll be taking the promotion test there, right? In these two weeks, I've been completing quests to accumulate quest points so that I can take the promotion test to D-rank. According to the staff at the Adventurers Guild, I've been amassing points quite rapidly. Yes, that's the plan. I also intend to visit Duke of Aldeck while I'm there. All right. Understood. I'll inform the Adventurers Guild in the capital about the promotion test through a letter. And it'd be rude to visit President Valdek without informing him beforehand, so I'll send a letter from myself too. Also, I'd like to express my gratitude before heading to the capital. Huh? Gratitude? Have I done something worthy of your thanks, Barbossa's sin? Looking bewildered, I asked, and Barbossa began to answer with a serious expression. Yeah, you have. Thanks to you. President Valdek of the Valdek Adventurers Guild was saved, you helped our guild staff, and you've ensured that my friend Midbelt's wish for his relatives to inherit this goes ace was fulfilled. Barbossa San, I don't think the last one was because of me. No, it was because of you. If you hadn't been there, the current lord would have either been sent to the countryside or would have ended up in a managerial position in the capital. I think he's happy in the afterlife too. Barbossa bows his head towards me. I sincerely thank you. Thank you. Arlena, th thank you, Barbossa san. Um, well, uh, um, oh no. I can feel my face heating up, ha ha ha. Well, don't waste time here chatting forever, go to the capital. Yes, thank you for everything, everyone at the guild. Thank you, Arlena san. Take care, Arlena san. Your embarrassed face is cute too. The guild staff members come over to thank me, oh my. Uh, um, t thank you. I'll. I'll be going now. With shaky steps and a hand on my dizzy head, I leave the guild behind. He's such a shy guy, isn't he? Can't he do something about it? I couldn't help but want to laugh as I recalled Arena leaving the comprehensive guild with uncertain steps. My cheeks threatened to rise in a smile, but I restrained myself for the sake of dignity. Guildmaster, that's up to her. Besides, that gap is one of the reasons she's so popular. Girly, what's up? I turned towards Girly, who had appeared out of nowhere and asked for her request. Could you take a look at these documents? Ah, understood. I'll read them later. I accepted the documents Gurley handed to me. Also, there's something I'd like to ask of you. Yes, what is it? Since Elrina is heading to the capital now, could you inform the Comprehensive Guild there about the promotion exams by letter? It seems she'll also meet with Chairman Valdek, so I'll handle that letter. It'll be faster if we split the task between you and me. Understood. Also, it seems there might be a problem. Huh? A problem? What are you talking about? Guildmaster, please look at that. I followed Gurley's pointed finger and saw fans of Elrina standing around in a daze. Oh. Probably because they heard she's going to the capital. Must have shocked them. Guildmaster. Should we wake them up? Leave them. It'll be quieter that way. Now, let's get back to work. Understood. After saying that to Gurley, I returned to my desk. But 15 minutes later, 
chaos erupted as fans started shouting Elrina's name, and all of the staff of the Comprehensive Guild had to intervene to stop it. Damn it, this is all because of her. Remember this when she comes back. Girly chuckled dryly upon hearing the vice boss's words. As I walked through the town after leaving the guild, I received thanks and farewells from the townspeople although I had no idea where they got the information from. There were also many people seeing me off at the gate alongside the gatekeeper. Frankly, I couldn't help but feel embarrassed until I left the town. Oh, yeah, that was embarrassing. Well, now that I've left the town, there shouldn't be anyone around. I stopped walking on the path leading to the capital and, after confirming that there was no one around, I opened the menu to look at the vehicles stored in the garage. Since walking to the capital will take too much time and energy, let's use a vehicle to get there. Which one should I choose? The options for transportation were either a bike or a car. Alright. It's better to have something that can handle attacks. Let's go with a car. I summoned the Humvee 1151. Yeah, it's still impressive no matter how many times I see it. This is a military vehicle. Huh? What's this? I was astonished when I saw the weapon attached to the gun mount. The only one who could have done this is that guy. As I tried to establish communication with God, there was no response no matter how many times I tried. It's not connecting. Well then, I immediately called Meltine. Hello, Elrina. Calling me this early in the morning, did something happen? Yes, unfortunately, God has done it again. Again? Can't that person learn from past mistakes? Yes. God had been accessing my menu, arsenal, and equipment without permission, customizing my weapons and vehicles just for fun. Even though I had asked God why he could access my menu before, he said, well, I made it possible for me to access the menu before giving you that power. Of course, I won't do anything strange. But that God is already doing strange things enough. I've asked him to revert the customization, but that God. Ugh. There's no point in getting angry now. But why does this even exist? I don't remember acquiring this super rare weapon. Come to think of it, the other day, God was smiling and said, I got something good, let's show Elrin a chan. She'll definitely be happy. Could this be it? I'm sure it is. I didn't have this. And I really wanted it. The Go 19B, 12.7x99mm. Attached to the gun mount of the Humvee 1151 is a weapon that can only be obtained through Gaka. It's one of the rarest weapons, said to be possessed by only about 15 people in the game I was playing. How did God get this? I wanted it too, but I never got it even after trying the Gak multiple times. Probably. I think he copied something that already existed and put it in your arsenal. If that's true, it's pretty dangerous. If the administrators find out, I'll be forcibly frozen won't I? Please rest assured about that. In your case, you're not logged into the game world, but rather, you've incorporated the game data from your previous life into your body. So, even if you modify it, you won't be punished for unauthorized modifications. Ugh. So as long as I'm not logged into the game, it's okay to modify it? However, this time, God has given you something really amazing. I believe you can fight a hundred soldiers in this world with just this. No, no. It's impossible. If I had three of these, then maybe, but not just one. Why is that? If we think about it logically, we can effectively deal with it by deploying tactics like flanking with bows and magic. Plus, I can think of other methods. Dealing with a group of enemies is easy, but dealing with scattered enemies is difficult. Because you have to aim the gun in different directions, your field of view becomes limited and vulnerable. However, Meltine chuckled. Huh? Did I say something strange? In this world, there are few people who can think like you. Besides, you would understand the range of bows and magic. The characters' genders are aligned, male for male characters and female for female characters. The dialogue between characters has been enriched and modernized while maintaining the essence of the original text. Additionally, the rebounds for game elements have been transformed into FPS elements, enhancing the action and intensity of the narrative. Um. So the usual range for magic is 15 meters, extendable by skill level, but in this world, the range for bows is about 80 meters. However, hitting a critical spot effectively only extends to around 30 meters, right? Meltina San showed a look of interest before delving into the knowledge of this world. Yes, indeed. As I mentioned earlier, if the soldiers in this world were to deal with you, they would likely opt for a straightforward approach, massing their numbers and charging. If a hundred fails, then 200, all the while shooting arrows and casting spells. And if that doesn't work, 
they'll simply increase their numbers and charge again. It's a rather brutal strategy, isn't it? What a ruthless way to engage in battle. It's quite terrifying. Hence, in this world, there are few individuals akin to the warlords of the Three Kingdoms or the Sengoku period. Moreover, there are instances where nobles, who may not know the first thing about war, take command of the army to gain fame. Quite chilling, isn't it? Wow. It feels like I've heard of similar things happening on Earth. Oh well, never mind. But before we get spotted by someone, wouldn't it be better to get going? Yes, indeed. It would be a waste of time to stand here chatting. Yeah, and besides, I was told yesterday by the god that the capital is livelier and more bustling than Gauss, so we should probably secure accommodation first. That's what I was told. Regarding personal customizations, let me brief you on that. Oh, and Arena san here in this world, when riding horses or carriages, we keep to the right side of the road. Well then, if anything happens, please don't hesitate to contact me. Yes, thank you very much, Meltina San. With that, I ended the call and climbed into the driver's seat of the Han V1151, starting the engine. Now then, shall we go for a spin? I didn't realize the Han V was automatic. After releasing the handbrake, I pressed the accelerator and started moving. Feels pretty comfortable. Should I speed up a bit? Currently cruising at 50 km per hour on this clear road with no obstacles in sight, I contemplated increasing the speed a bit, but let's stop. It's better to drive safely, and at this rate, we should arrive in about 15 minutes. Huh? Once again, there's a carriage ahead. It seems like the traffic between the capital and Gauze has increased since two weeks ago. Well, forget it. I'll overtake. With that decision, I approached the carriage from behind, signaled left, pressed the accelerator slightly to pass the carriage on the left side, then eased off the accelerator, returning to 50 km per hour and maintaining distance from the carriage. When I passed them, the carriage driver looked extremely surprised. Well, it's understandable to make that face when seeing something you've never encountered before. Alert. Danger detected at 12 o'clock possibility of enemy presence. Thanks to the radar upgrade from a radius of 200 meters to 500 meters by the god since my first day of reincarnation, it's been quite helpful. But why are there enemies near the road? Are we facing bandits or rogue adventurers again? I parked my car by the side of the road and glanced ahead, spotting something a little distance away from the road that I couldn't identify. However, I could tell there was something there so I took out my binoculars to get a closer look. That's the country's knights. And they're facing orcs? No way. There shouldn't be any reports of them being here. Four knights were battling five orcs, and it was evident that the knights were at a disadvantage. One of them seemed familiar. These guys never learn. Well, let's lend a hand. After saying that, I opened the menu and holstered my Ace-32 rifle, opting instead for a different one, the Marksman Rifle SVU-03. Loaded with 7.62x54mm rounds. Of course, I didn't use the Go 19B. There's a risk of turning the knights into mere splinters with that thing. Now that I'm ready, I can't shoot the orcs from here, so I need to move to get a better angle. I started moving to assist the knights. Weapon Showcase Hom V1151, manufactured by AM General. The 1151 is a military vehicle capable of attaching additional armor. Trivia The U.S. military sought a successor to the Humvee from 2018 to the 2030s. The Oshkosh Corporation's LATV was chosen as the replacement model. Starting in 2018, the LATV numbers gradually increased, phasing out the Humvee. Go 19B Developed by General Electric the Go 19B is a fearsome Gatling style machine gun using 12.9 x 99mm rounds, capable of firing 1,000 to 2,000 rounds per minute. The U.S. military employs the Go 19A on reconnaissance helicopters, V 22 Ospreys, and other fixed mounts, including models attachable to vehicles like the Humvee. The Go 19B is a lighter variant of the Go 19A. SVU OTS 03, a bullpup version of the Dragunov SVD, the SVU OTS 03 features a suppressor like muzzle that doubles as a flash hider, along with foldable backup iron sights. It operates as a semi automatic rifle. A different variant, the OTS 03A, integrates a flute design and operates semi and fully automatically through trigger pull, similar to the Shter August. How did you find it? Next time, we aim for Arena's battle. However, there have been reports of numerous typos in my work, 
so I'll be reviewing it from scratch for the next installment. I anticipate a slight delay in posting, but I appreciate your understanding. Until next time, farewell. Volume 02 Chapter Row 3 Tilda Second Night Order Vice Commander, Bodger Dalton Tilda Bodger let out a roar as he dodged the charging orc swinging its hand axe, then slashed with his dual swords using the skill, Twin Blade Strike but it wasn't a fatal blow. What the hell is going on? I didn't receive any reports of orcs being in this area. Bodger, along with three members of the Night Order, was conducting monster combat training when they unexpectedly encountered orcs in this vicinity. These orcs were stronger than usual, and there were still five of them. This could endanger my subordinates. I'll hold these guys off. You all need to return to the capital and inform Captain Girl. We can't just leave Vice Commander Bodger behind and run away. You can't handle these creatures. Please, just run. That's the only way. Still, abandoning Vice Commander Bodger. Just go. Wah? Turning towards the source of the voice, one of my subordinates, Aziz, was kneeling with blood flowing from his left shoulder as an orc raised its club to strike aiming to finish him off. Suddenly, an arrow pierced the orc's eye, shot by Molina in an attempt to save Aces. Wah buu Wah-ah. Now's my chance. As the orc writhed in agony from the arrow, Bodger approached and crossed his dual swords. Wah-ah. With a fierce battle cry, Bodger struck the orc with slashes and delivered a final blow with a kick to its chin. Die, you damn monster. The orc struck by Bodger's blades sank to the ground from its back. Apologies, Vice Commander. Aces still kneeling with his hand on his left shoulder, looked up at Bodger, who remained ready to face the orcs, and spoke. Forget about me, hurry and go to Rizlina to get healed. Yes, sir. After saying this, Aces rushed towards Rizlina. Four more left. Huh? One's missing. Where did it go? Kaya turning towards the sound of the scream. Molina was now being pinned down by an orc. Damn it. While distracted by Aces, Molina got captured. I sprinted to help Molina. But the orc pinning her down turned towards me. Human, if you don't behave, I'll kill this woman. What? I halted my run towards the orc. Upon closer inspection, it had both hands around Molina's neck, seemingly intending to break it. Senpai Molina. Ursula, please. Save her. Wow. Stop, Rizlina. If you do that, Molina will be killed. I prevented Rizlina from using her summoned beast to try to save Molina. The orc speaks. These are no ordinary orcs after all. What to do? This situation is dire. That's right, just keep it like that. Release Molina. Wahahaha. <laughs> the orc mocked me with an infuriating grin. No, don't. Women are to be taken. Men are not needed, so kill them. Vice Commander. I can't. The orc pinning down Molina tightened its grip preventing her from finishing her sentence. Shut up, woman. Damn it. How? How can I save my subordinates? While pondering a way to help, an orc approached me from behind, wielding its rusty sword and swinging it towards me. Wahaha. <laughs> die. Am I going to die here without being able to save my subordinates? Kaya. Within Molina's scream, a resounding explosion reached my ears. What happened to Molina? Huh? A. Ah. Ah. For some reason, Molina and Azel looked surprised while Rizlina let out a sound as if she had realized something. The orc that was about to kill me stopped its movement, its expression frozen in disbelief. Following its gaze, I saw that the orc holding Molina hostage had a hole in its head. Dead. What? Who did this? Vice Commander. Quickly, get away from the orc. Volume 02 Chapter Row 3 As Rizlina uttered those words, I found myself trying to comprehend the phenomenon unfolding before me. I had completely forgotten to either move away from the orc or to launch an attack, caught in a state of analysis. Upon realizing this, I turned around only to find someone breathing heavily with bloodshot eyes. Damn it! What the hell happened to you? You're going to kill me. What's going on? This time, just as the orc aiming to kill me suddenly knelt down, clutching their right side with their left hand and groaning in pain, their head was blown off mid-action. Once again, that distinctive sound reached my ears a little delayed, and this time, it echoed twice. Squeal. You bastards, what are you doing? Now, one of the orcs, slightly farther away, collapsed while blood sprayed from the right side of their head. What the hell? Squeal. W-Y, Y, Y. ski e e e e e e e Upon witnessing their comrades' sudden death beside them, the nearby Ark seemed to realize that their own demise was imminent. Whether they comprehended the threat of death following their companion's fate or were simply terrified by the sight, it was unclear. However, their subsequent action was straightforward. They threw away their weapons, turned around, and started running. Yes, 
they chose the path of survival over avenging their fallen comrade, what? I attempted to chase after the fleeing orc, but for some reason, my body refused to move at that moment. No, perhaps it would be more accurate to say that my body resisted moving. Tilda Elrina's perspective Tilda. He's getting away. I remarked while peering through the scope attached to my SVU OTS 03. 7.62 times 54 millimeters, watching the pathetic orc running 400 meters away. However, I had no intention of letting him escape. Orc, you were unlucky. I aimed at the orc's right leg, squeezing the trigger until the primer was about to drop, inhaling lightly, exhaling slightly, then holding my breath. Now, simultaneously with that thought, I pulled the trigger fully, and as the gunshot rang out, the bullet pierced through the orc's right leg. The orc collapsed towards the ground after being shot in the leg, attempting to rise but from now on, I aimed at his head, aligning my breath, preparing to kill. Final shot. Pulling the trigger emitted the distinctive sound of 7.62 times 54 millimeters. At almost the same time, the bullet blew off the orc's head, killing it. Phew, alright. No other enemies in sight. After confirming the absence of other enemies, I checked the magazine of my SVU, OTS 03, there were still bullets left, but I replaced it with a new magazine. This was what they called a tactical reload. Why didn't that guy attack immediately after creating a chance by saving his or captured comrade? He seemed puzzled for some reason, but, oh well. Ultimately, it ended up benefiting me as I annihilated the orc. Rizarina san. I'll consider us even on this matter. With that thought, I looked at the knights through the scope of my SVU, OTS 03, but something seemed off. Huh? The knights seem a bit strange. Aside from Rizarina san, they're all wielding weapons and starting to be on guard. Oh? Now, there's someone arguing with a person wielding two swords, and Rizarina san's summoned beast is involved too. Sigh. Nothing we can do about it. I decided to walk to the Knight Order's headquarters to put an end to that conflict. After sorting this out, let's stow away the Humvee in the hangar, I said. Opening the menu, I store the bag filled with sand that was lying beneath the gun, along with other items, into the item box. After that, I stowed away the Humvee 1151 in the hangar and then stood up, heading towards the Knight Order. To think our reunion after so long would take this form. I can't help but sigh rather than rejoice. Sigh. Elyria uttered repeatedly as she walked. Volume 02 Chapter 04 As I made my way towards the Knight's direction, I paused momentarily to observe the situation. Peering through my binoculars at the Knight Station 300 meters ahead, it seemed they hadn't noticed me yet. In fact, it appeared that a heated argument between two of them was escalating. Another 50 meters ahead, I spotted Rizrina sitting on the ground, tears streaming down her face. Her companion in the argument scratched his head, wearing a troubled expression. Surrounding them, other individuals seemed to be offering comfort and conversation. What on earth are they doing in a place like this? As I approached within 200 meters, I called out Rizrina's name loudly. A person with a bow turned towards me upon hearing my voice. Lucky. But wait, are they aiming that bow at me? Caution. Detected danger at 12 o'clock. Potential enemy presence. What? Isn't that a bit extreme? I'm the one who helped them, yet they treat me like this. Well, I guess it's understandable. After all, besides Rizrina, they don't know me, and at this distance, it's hard to see clearly. Ah, right. If I get closer. I should be able to use the microphone function on my headset, right? I stopped walking and turned the knob on my headset to listen in on the night's conversation. Wah, Elchan must be here. I can only think of Elchan's attacks. Who could pull off such a stunt? Besides, I can't see anyone around. Excuse me, Vice Captain. There's someone walking towards us. How should we respond? What kind of person? How many are there? Finally, they noticed. But wait. Did the person with the bow not inform them about me? I can't see clearly, but it seems to be one person. They don't seem to be carrying any weapons, but they have something like a black stick. They might be a thief disguised as a civilian. A black stick? Mulina, is that person's hair white? Wait, Rosrina. I don't have the magical eyesight skill like Keith, so I can't be sure. Rosrina, hurry up and recognize me. You might get shot by the person you're talking to with that bow. Well. It's still out of range for now. Ugh. Now hold on, both of you. Mulina, are you sure there's only one person? Is there no one else around? Yes, I don't see anyone else. I think it's just one person. It does seem like just one person. Let's leave the orcs for now and go meet them. Vice Captain, there might be danger. Oh Zeus, 
I'm aware of that. If that person turns out to be the Elvina that Rosrina mentioned, we'd be disrespecting Captain Girl's benefactor. Besides, we're knights, right? We can't be afraid of such things. And what if that person walking is really just a civilian? I see your point, Vice Captain. Let's approach them cautiously. Keep your weapons sheathed, as they might mistake us for bandits and run away. Everyone, let's go meet them. The Vice Captain truly is capable of making decisive decisions. Understood. He he he. It's been a while since I've seen El Chan. I'm looking forward to it. What nonsense are you spouting? We haven't confirmed that it's El Rina yet. And where's your response? Ah. I, uh, forgot. Sorry, Vice Captain Vega. This guy. I'll inform Captain Girl about this. Wah. Vice Captain Vega, that's mean. Rosrina, my condolences. I'll make sure to pick up the pieces for you. After lowering the volume on my headset. I continued walking towards the knights to meet Rosrina. Volume 02 Chapter 04 Eline, as soon as she recognized me, Lesline is printed towards me, shouting my name at the top of her lungs and wrapping me in a tight embrace. Ta, ta, L, ta, thank goodness, ta, I found you, ta, Lesline, I'm glad to see you too, but did you really have to sprint at full speed like that? Between her heavy breathing and sweat, it was hard to decipher what she was trying to convey. Wait. Is Lizlina leaning on me? It feels like I'm supporting her weight, but maybe it's just my imagination? Ka'an. Her summoned creature also looks up with concern. I bring up the menu and purchase a bottle of potion with my points, then hand it to Lizlina after opening the lid. Here you go, Lizlina. Have a sip of this potion. Ta. Ta. Think. Ta. You. Ta. L. Ta. I'm not sure what she's saying, but after stepping back from me. Lizlina takes the bottle and starts drinking. Ta. Finally caught up. Hey, Lizlina. What's with the sudden sprinting? You're always like this. But Lizlina, completely absorbed in drinking, pays no attention to me scolding her. So, I decide to greet the people holding swords nearby. Um, since it doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere with our conversation, let me introduce myself first. Nice to meet you. I'm Elena from the Adventurer Department of the Comprehensive Guild. Mm. Oh yeah? Let's save the scolding for later. My name is Bridger Dalton, a human, and I serve as the vice captain of the Second Knight Division of the Kingdom of Redgalm. I'm Oz. As you can see, I'm a dwarf residing in the Knight Division. And this here is my pride, my axe. The short man proudly displays his long-handled axe. Come to think of it, the guild staff mentioned that dwarves tend to cherish their weapons as much as their lives. I'm Maureen Olivia's, a beast man, specifically a rabbit, and I'm in the same cohort as Lizlina. Although our ages differ. Oh, Morina is Lizlina's cohort. Could it be that you heard me earlier because of those ears? Actually, there weren't any obstacles around, so it wouldn't be strange if my loud voice reached them anyway. Hee <laughs> hee, that's right. I'm sorry for aiming an arrow at you earlier. I couldn't hear clearly because Lizlina was crying and screaming. Ah, I see. My voice was probably muffled by Lizlina's crying. L. Thank you. It was sweet and delicious, Lizlina says as she shows me the empty bottle. You drank it all? I'm glad you liked it, but since we've finished greeting Vice Captain Bedger and the others, let's get to the point. Huh? When did you finish greeting Vice Captain Bedger and the others? Just a moment ago. Weren't you listening while you were drinking, Lizlina? Ah, ah, she wasn't listening. You can tell by her expression. You, Vice Captain Bedger furrows his brow at Lizlina but I'll let him scold her later. Um, is it okay if we discuss this after I finish talking with Elle? But since Vice Captain Bedger is scolding Lizlina while looking at her, it seems like he didn't hear me. Elrina, when Vice Captain Bedger gets like that, it's best to leave him alone. Ha. I guess so. I look at Vice Captain Bedger scolding Lizlina with his hands on his hips, and Lizlina repeatedly saying sorry while kneeling on the ground. Yeah, it seems impossible. So, what did you want to talk to me about? We're fine with hearing you out. Well, we're all in the same night division, so it doesn't matter. Plus, I want to save time. Well, just to confirm, when we left Gosace, did we receive any communication from the Comprehensive Guild about orc sightings around here? Did we come here to investigate the orcs? The two exchanged glances before turning their attention back to us. We came here for training. We haven't heard anything about orc sightings, so... The Knight Division hasn't heard about the orcs either. Does that mean we're the first to confirm the presence of orcs? Looks like it. Wait a minute. Morina looks at me with a concerned expression. Hmm? What is it? We have something we need to confirm with you too. If it won't take long, 
I'll listen, I want to collect the orcs I defeated and hurry back to the kingdom. Volume 02 Chapter 05 After retrieving the corpse of the orc that hadn't been devoured by the wolf into my storage, I headed towards the capital on the Humvee 1151. Hey, Elena. I is this thing really moving? Like, seriously moving? It's not gonna break down, right? Please, tell me it won't. Glancing at Bajor through the rearview mirror, I saw him clinging to Azus's neck, his voice filled with despair. Bajor San, Azus seems to be in pain, so please let him go. He might die. You guys aren't scared riding this incomprehensible thing? This guy just isn't listening to me at all. Well, I find riding it quite enjoyable. Mariana said casually to Bajor. I trust Hel Chan, so I'm not scared. Lizrina answered Bajor with a smug expression. Is it just my imagination, or is there some resentment in her tone? Be Bajor. Vice. Squad leader. Please. Let. Go. It's. Painful. Azus, with a pale face, said to Bajor in a strained voice, but it seemed like he couldn't hear at all, not loosening his grip on Azus's arm. Bajor San, you are the vice squad leader, right? Get it together. All right, everyone. We'll be arriving at the capital soon, so please get ready to disembark. Initially, Mariana had been leaning out of the gun turret, but upon seeing Bajor clinging to Azus, she struggled to pry him off. However, the moment she heard me speak, she stopped trying and turned to face me. It's quite fast reaching the capital from here. No, no, Mariana, please don't stop. We need to help Hazes quickly. Elchan, you're so mysterious. Do you have any other tricks? It's a secret. Ah, uh, come on, Elchan. That's mean. Just a little hint? Nope. If you try to find out, I won't give you the drink from earlier. That's mean. Elchan, being mean to me, wine. Uh oh. Lazrina started crying. Did I go too far? Thinking that, I slowed down the Humvee 1151 and parked behind the last carriage waiting for immigration procedures, then turned off the engine. It seemed quicker to walk to the gate from here rather than waiting in the carriage immigration queue. Let's get off here and walk to the gate. Pull this lever here, and the door will open. I instructed Bajor and the others on how to open the doors I got off first. Yes, that was fun. I'll ask for your help again if there's a chance. Lazrina and Mariana got off normally, but the other two didn't. D did we stop? We stopped, right, Elena? What's going on? We've already arrived, Bajor San. Saying so, I opened the door on Bajor's side with a bewildered expression, urging him to disembark. Arrived? At the capital. All right, let's get off. Us. As Bajor said that and looked around, his gaze stopped, then his expression changed from fear to astonishment. Azus, Azus, pull yourself together. Bajor shook Azus, who had turned blue and was foaming at the mouth, but Azus only moved his head like a doll and didn't regain consciousness. What the hell? Why is this happening? Huh? Could it be? Was the orc's weapon poisoned? Bajor laid Azus down inside the vehicle and began rummaging through his backpack. What is he even doing? Is he foolish? None. Damn it. Melina. I remember you had an antidote, right? Give it to me. Bajor looked at us with a dark expression and stopped moving as he stared at us one by one. W. What are you all doing? Bajor San. Azus isn't affected by poison. What? Then why is Azus like this? It seems you're not aware at all. Everyone present pointed at him and said, because you were strangling him. W what? After that, the culprit hurriedly performed CPR on Azus, and thanks to that, Azus was saved without incident. I thought I was a goner, Azus muttered, his expression still sour as he regained consciousness. I'm sorry, Azus, Dr apologized sincerely, his remorse palpable. I couldn't enjoy Elrena's ride, Azus continued. I'm truly sorry, Dr reiterated feeling the weight of his actions. This could be considered attempted murder on Vice Commander Bjur's part. With three witnesses, it might not just result in emotion but even resignation from the Knight's Order, a voice chimed in, dripping with resentment. It was surely Lizlina, still holding a grudge from earlier. Please, forgive me. You can hit me if it helps. Bjur pleaded, bowing his head towards Aziz. It was a scene devoid of the usual dignity befitting a Vice Commander. Vice Commander Bjur. Let's discuss this after the report is filed, Marina interjected firmly. But Marina, I can't rest until this is resolved. Bjur protested. Prioritize the orc report first, Vice Commander Bjur, Marina reminded him sternly. Oh? Marina is upset. But her anger is softened by her cute demeanor, making it less intimidating. Wait, I hear something approaching. It's not showing up on radar as an enemy, so it should be safe. Oh, it's you after all. Elrena, 
It's been a while. Are you doing well? Amy appeared behind them, accompanied by 20 knights, whether on patrol or not, was unclear. Amy San, long time no see. He he, it's been a while indeed. I'm glad to see you, Elrina. Amy embraced me suddenly. A Amy San? This is embarrassing. Oh? Is it? You react like a boy. No, 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 no. I used to be a boy. Of course, this situation is embarrassing. Anyway, please step back. I have something important to discuss. Oh? Can't we talk like this? I need to talk seriously, so please step back. Fine. I understand. With that, Amy stepped away from me. So, Elrina, what's this serious matter? Well, Actually, I told Amy about the orc attack on the road between Gozis and the capital, and how I helped Jer. I see. I understand the situation now. So, you all came back to report? Yes, I feel inadequate. Jer and his companions looked at Amy with a sense of inferiority. No sulking, Vice Knights. If you feel inadequate or pathetic, then become stronger. And if Elrina helped you, don't forget to thank her sincerely. Watching Amy's resolute attitude towards Jer and the others, I couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration. Perhaps it was because I was seeing someone who resembled a knight in the truest sense. That's right. You're absolutely right. Let's make today's experience a lesson for the future. Such spirit, Jer. Oh, Amy, why did you bring 20 knights here? Wasn't the patrol scheduled for tomorrow? Jer inquired. Amy looked troubled as she answered Jer's question. Well, you see, we received information about an unknown monster heading towards the capital. An unknown monster appeared? I didn't see anything like that until I came here. Is that about the orc I mentioned earlier? No, it's different. So, what kind of monster is it? Can you share the information? Of course. Since it was an urgent letter, there's not much information. It said the monster was covered in metal all over its body and was running at incredible speed along the road. Urgent? Did someone send a letter with a tamed monster to deliver it to the capital, but covered in metal? An iron golem? No, it's not. According to the information, it looked like there was a person inside the monster. So, maybe it's some sort of carriage? Since there might be danger, we're here to check it out. Jer, would you come with us? Understood. I'll accompany you. Amy, Lizlina and the others will report to Guildmaster Gwil about the orc. Roger that. Huh? Is that monster? Amy San. What's wrong, Elrina? Could that monster be? This? I pointed to the Hand V1151, seeking confirmation from Amy. Huh? Oh. After looking at the Hand V1151, Amy came over to me and grabbed my shoulders. It's exactly as described. Elrina, why is this here? Uh-oh. Amy's face is too close and it's intimidating. Plus, she's gripping my shoulders so hard, it hurts. I, I, well, tell me straight, Elrina. Yeah, I should have held back a bit more. I regret it now. This belongs to me. Let's have a serious talk, Elrina. Shall we? As I faced Amy's intimidating gaze. I wished I had been more restrained. Volume 02 Chapter Row 6 And now, Bodger, I'll leave the report to the upper echelons regarding the orcs to you. Understood, but, is it alright to leave Ellie in such a frightened state? Bodger looked at Ellie, who was trembling, with pity in his eyes. Ah, 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 I, I saw it. Amy's terrifying expression? And she's talking to Bodger right now with a calm expression on her face. Scary. Amy is scree. I, I simply asked Tally Chan about that matter. So I haven't done anything to scare her at all. And no, 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 no. It was scary. Really scary. I thought I'd be killed the moment I lied. By the way, Ellie Chan. Eek. Why yes. Yes. That's what I meant to say but my voice ended up sounding weird. I'll inform Duke of Aldeck about your arrival in the capital. You're heading straight to the guild, right? Yes, that's the plan. Then, please report to the Comprehensive Guild about the possibility of a special specimen orc. Why yes, understood. Then, please board that vehicle. We'll guide you to the gate ahead with our horses so you can enter quickly. Certainly, it seems it'll take some time to get into the capital with this queue. Well, at this point, even if Amy's true identity is exposed, I'll just have to deal with it and hide Hamvi. Amy San, you don't have to do that. I'll delete it now. After saying that, I stored Hamvi 1152 in the warehouse. A. E. E. Amy San, please let me ride with you. Huh? When I looked at Amy San, she was holding her head and muttering something while looking down. Even though I shouldn't have the skill, 
I can use the item box. Hey Amy Sen, are you okay? I'm not okay at all. It feels like everything I learned at the academy has been overturned. Amy Sen started getting angry again. You want stop it because it's scree. Um, Amy Senpai, let's enter the capital quickly. If El Chan gets angry, it might delay the report to Captain Gil, right? Oh. I'm grateful that Liz Lina San is supporting me. A true friend indeed. That's true. Well then, Ellie Chan, please ride behind me. You four will ride with Bajer. And when you return to the barracks, continue with the training. After Amy San and the riders said understood, the four of us who were just assigned the mission approached Bajer San and the others. Bajer, I'm counting on you. Understood. Leave the report to me. After saying that, Bajer San turned to me. I owe you one. Thanks, El Chan. Let's meet again sometime. Today was a big help. Let me thank you later. Elena San, if we meet again, please let me ride that vehicle. Ah, sure. Of course. After shaking hands with me, who had turned red, Bajor San and the others mounted their horses. You two, get on. Yes. I climbed onto the back of the horse Amy San was controlling. Well then, Amy, I'll go ahead. Yes, please. Release them. When Bajor San instructed the rider holding the reins, he replied with a yes, and then urged the horse towards the capital. Leslie Inasan and the others followed suit. Huh? Amy San, do we not have to follow Bajor San and the others? It's fine. Since we'll part ways as soon as we enter the capital, there's no problem letting them go ahead. Besides, in your case, you'll have to undergo an inspection. Huh? I won't be inspected? Don't the knights have to go through inspections? Huh? Amy San looked at me with a face that seemed to say she didn't know. Is this one of those situations? Ah. Amy San, since you don't know, could you please explain? Why yes. Um. You see, at the entrance of the gate, there's a special magic cast on it. It can discern whether the card holder is a soldier or a writer of this country, or if it belongs to the person themselves through the use of a card. If someone who isn't the owner tries to enter with a rider's card, the bells attached to the gate will ring. It's considered a serious offense to attempt such a thing, so be careful. Is it just human nature to feel scared just by imagining the idea of a serious offense? Amy San took out a rider card from her pocket and showed it to me. This is the rider card. Taking a look at the rider card, some kind of letters seem to float up, faintly glowing. If the owner is holding it, this emblem will appear. When we knights or soldiers want to pass through, we only need to present our rider card. Just that simple? It's kind of enviable. This magic was created and spread by the hero of old. The hero created magic and spread it, huh? If they could create something as brilliant as this, did they create anything else for the world? Wow, the ancestors of Sir Girl must have been amazing. Huh? If they could create such amazing things, why not spread the ability of these cards to civilians? You have to write special magic on the cards, so it costs money. That's why there's not enough to distribute it to the citizens. Oh, I see. I thought it was convenient, but there are drawbacks. And when we return to the barracks, we have to show if we have any criminal history, so in a way, it's inconvenient. Is that so? Thank you, Amy San. Hee <laughs> hee, that's right. Well, now that the explanation is done, Shall we go? Yes. Hearing my response, Amy San led the horse towards the capital. All right, we're done. Here's your card back. I received my comprehensive guild card back from the gatekeeper. Amy San, we're done. We're done. Huh. Well then, let's get on the horse. Yes. After I replied, I got back on the horse that Amy San was controlling. You're on. Let's go. Saying so, Amy San walked the horse towards the comprehensive guild. So this is the capital. It's livelier than Gosis. Huh. Oh. Is that shop over there a clothing store? I didn't see any shops with display windows in Gosus. Could that shop be a high-end one? Oh. Look at that armor displayed in the armor shop over there. It's so cool. It's like armor you'd see in a game. Wait, am I in a world like that game? Hey, Arlena Chan. Yes, what is it? While enjoying the scenery of the capital, Amy San suddenly spoke to me. Are you still not interested in joining the Knights? I think it would be reassuring for me if you joined, and I think Girl and Keith would be happy too. Amy San was trying to recruit me, but I have no intention of joining the Knights. I'm sorry, Amy San. I can join the Knights. I see. I guess I couldn't recruit you after all. But I'll rely on you when we fight together, Arlena Chan. Yes, I understand. Amy San seemed to know from the start that I would refuse her offer but I wonder why I feel a strange sense of guilt when I look into her eyes. Because I couldn't meet her expectations? Or maybe. Okay, 
we've arrived. I'll leave the rest to you, Arlena Chan. While thinking about that, we arrived in front of the Comprehensive Guild. Thank you, Amy San. After thanking her, I got off the horse. I should be the one thanking you. Oh well, since we can't stand here chatting, let's meet later. I'll bring Earl and Keith with me. They also wanted to see you. I understand. I'll be looking forward to it. Hee <laughs> hee, then tell the one in the guild that I said hi. See you later, Arlena Chan. Huh? Who's he? Don't just leave me behind like that, Amy San. Amy San. Who is he? I tried asking Amy San, but she just waved her hand and walked away. She's gone. Well, I guess I'll report back. While pondering who Amy San was referring to, I entered the Comprehensive Guild. Oh, truly the Grand Guild of the Royal Capital. Not only the exterior but the interior design is splendid, and the crowd is bustling too. Just as Mr. Boses described it before. Um, let's see. The adventurer's department counter is over there. I queued up at the back of the line for the adventurer's department reception counter. But goodness, even the counter is impressive. Compared to when I was in Go's Ace, where there were only four reception counters for the adventurer's department, four for the commercial department, and two for the industrial department, totaling only ten, here in the capital. There are 10 reception counters for all three departments. This indicates the significant role the Comprehensive Guild plays in this world or perhaps it's just a display of the King's grandeur through investment. Next, please. Oh, yes. Already called up. With this many counters, the wait is short. Good morning. What can I assist you with today? The receptionist greeted me with a business smile. I've come to sell materials and report. Then, May I first see your adventurer's department card? I handed over my adventurer's department card to the receptionist, who glanced at my name and her eyes lit up. Ah, Lady Alrena, isn't it? I apologize for the inconvenience, but I have some matters to discuss, so I'll assist you in the meeting room instead. A meeting room. I can't shake off this bad feeling. But I haven't done anything wrong at all. Oh no, it's not that. In your case, there's a discussion regarding a rank advancement test which might take a while, so let's have a talk in the meeting room. That's all. I see, that's what she meant. Understood. But I believe it's better to report first. Sigh. A report, you say? Yes, a report. On my way from Gozace to the capital, I encountered some orcs. I also have evidence. Oh orcs? The receptionist leaned forward from her counter. I get that she's surprised, but she's too close. Her face is too close. Please? Calm down. Let's discuss the details in the meeting room. I said, and the receptionist stopped leaning forward, straightened herself, cleared her throat, and then looked at me. You are right. Let me guide you then. Please follow me. Yes. And so, I followed the receptionist towards the meeting room. Volume 02 Chapter 07 The receptionist opened the door, turning towards us. Please wait here while I summon your examiner, she said. Understood. I replied. Entering the reception room and seating myself on the sofa, awaiting the arrival of the staff member. I wonder if the examiner for the promotion exam will come, or perhaps the guild master? Well, regardless, I hope to conclude the conversation quickly and head to Duke of Aldeck's place. Knock, knock. Yes? Excuse me. With that voice, the door opened, and the receptionist from earlier entered the room, facing me, beginning the introduction of the person she brought along. Lady Erlina. This is the General Guild Chief of Redgilm, Mr. Ramamaran. Indeed, the General Guild Chief of Redgilm, Ramamaran of the Rabbit Tribe, as written in the letter. While Melina had chestnut colored hair, Ramal had black hair, wearing an eye patch over her left eye, appearing as a slender woman. Pleased to meet you. I am Relina. Quite a polite lady you are. Isn't it normal to greet while bowing your head? And is this person the examiner for the test? Well, Arlena is just like that. Huh? I recognize this voice. Thinking so, I raised my head and glanced at the entrance, where a person who shouldn't be here was standing. Eat, eat, why are you here? Moreover, Eat was not wearing the attire of the knights but leather armor. Hey. After that, I quit the knights. Resigned, to be precise. After that, Duke of Aldeck arranged for me to join the General Guild. Resigned. Could it be? Is it because of that incident? Yes. What a situation. Eid must have wanted to continue with the Knights, but to end up like this. Don't make that face. It's not your fault. Besides, even if I had been coerced, I'm still one of the suspects in that incident. If I didn't do this, the second Knights wouldn't have been able to move on. Indeed, even though continuing with the Knights without any consequences after being involved in such a serious incident would seem like a sweet deal to others, 
it would also provide ammunition for those against the second knights. Um, sorry for interrupting the conversation, but is he your supervising officer for the promotion exam? Ah, that's fine. Then, shall I return to the counter? Please do. With Ramos' words, the receptionist left the room, leaving only three of us in the reception room. I couldn't hide my surprise at the receptionist's earlier words. It is my supervising officer. That's right. First, let me explain the contents of the D-rank promotion exam. We'll talk about the rest, like the orcs, later. While Melina's hair was chestnut colored, Ramos was black, and she wore an eye patch over her left eye. Nice to meet you, Arlena. You're quite the polite lady. Isn't it normal to bow while greeting? And is she the examiner for the test? Well, Arlena is like that. Huh? I recognize this voice. Thinking so, I raised my head and glanced at the entrance, where someone who shouldn't be here was standing. Eed, -e why are you here? Moreover, Eed was not wearing the knight's uniform but leather armor. Hey. After that, I quit the knights. Resigned, to be precise. After that, Duke of Aldeck arranged for me to join the General Guild. Resigned. Could it be? Is it because of that incident? Yes. What a situation. Eid must have wanted to continue with the Knights, but to end up like this. Don't make that face. It's not your fault. Besides, even if I had been coerced, I'm still one of the suspects in that incident. If I didn't do this, the Second Knights wouldn't have been able to move on. Indeed, even though continuing with the Knights without any consequences after being involved in such a serious incident would seem like a sweet deal to others, it would also provide ammunition for those against the Second Knights. Um, sorry for interrupting the conversation, but is he your supervising officer for the promotion exam? Ah, that's fine. Then, shall I return to the counter? Please do. With Ramos' words, the receptionist left the room leaving only three of us in the reception room. I couldn't hide my surprise at the receptionist's earlier words. It is my supervising officer. That's right. First, let me explain the contents of the D-rank promotion exam. We'll talk about the rest, like the orcs, later. The words of Instructor Aid certainly held some merit. There might be those who think, if we leave everything to the sky, passing will be a breeze. But let me remind you, if anyone tries that, they'll fail for sure, so watch out. He cautioned. Why yes, I wished I had teamed up with someone to conquer a dungeon. Don't make that face. Among your peers, there are also those who attempt the D-rank promotion test solo, solely based on their prowess. You are one of them. Gahahaha. <laughs> Instructor Aid burst into laughter, his mouth wide open. Well, if you pass this D-rank promotion test, you'll not only become a D-rank adventurer but also be allowed to enter dungeons without the supervision of higher-ranked guild members. And even if you fail, you can retake it next week. The prospect of venturing into dungeons alone was enticing. Also, Elena, let me make it clear one last time. While I am your instructor this time, I will not engage in any misconduct as a comprehensive guild staff member. Understood? Instructor Aid stared straight at me with a serious expression. Why yes. Understood. Good. That concludes our briefing from my end. Now, tell me about the orc you encountered. Understood. As I recounted the encounter with the orc I had defeated on the way to the capital to Lamuel, she crossed her arms, pondered for a moment, then began speaking to me. I see. We should issue a warning just in case. However, the fact that the orc spoke implies it might be a higher ranking breed. Um, could you take a look at the orc? I've brought it with me. What? You have it with you? Yes. I do. Instructor Aid reacted to my words. Huh? I thought you didn't have the item box skill. Do you have an expanded bag or something? Wait, did Instructor Aid look at my stats? I heard about your stats from Captain Gell's team. Ah, so Captain Gell's team informed Instructor Aid. Wait a moment. Didn't Amy say she summoned a rifle from nothing? If that's what she claims, then it must be true, right? Elena, it would be troublesome to present it here so accompany us to the dismantling site. We'll inspect the orc there. Yes, understood. Following Lamuel out of the reception room and walking down the hallway for a while, we arrived at what seemed to be the dismantling area. Lamuel pointed to an empty space next to the dismantling platform. Please place the orc there. Understood. I followed Lamuel's instructions and selected an orc carcass from the storage. Why would you pull out an orc from nothing when you don't even have the item box skill? Who are you, Aid? The instructor, asked, his face twisted in confusion. Just an ordinary girl, I replied, meeting his gaze. Aid raised an eyebrow at my response. Pulling off something like this without the item box skill isn't ordinary at all. What? Do you have to be so mad, 
Aid Sensei, I just got scolded by Amy Sen for the same thing earlier. Aid, save the lecture for later. Are these all the bodies? He continued, ignoring my protests. Yes, I confirmed. All right then. Except for this one orc whose face is smashed, the rest can be examined. Even at a glance, there are noticeable differences from a regular orc. It might be a special individual, Aid said eyes widening as he inspected the orc. A special individual? If that's true, dealing with this will be impossible for Bjur and the others. To think something like this was lurking near the royal capital. I'll issue a warning immediately. Anderlina, A turned to me. Yes, what is it? Buy this one at the Adventurer's Guild. It might take some time for the appraisal, but can you handle it? Well, I'm planning to get lodging first and then visit Duke of Aldex's residence. Can we do it another day? Fair enough. When you come to the guild tomorrow, We'll settle the payment. That's all from me. I'm heading back to work, Aid concluded before leaving the dismantling site. He's gone, I remarked as Aid's absence dawned on me. Aid placed a hand on my left shoulder, offering reassurance. Guildmaster Lamuel might seem stern, but she's a good person. Don't worry about it. Is that so? I mused. Anyway, Arlena, Aid continued, changing the subject. You helped Jur and the others. Thank you. What? What are you suddenly saying? I blurted it out, feeling flustered. Well, Jer is my drinking buddy, and the others. They're like former subordinates, important companions to me. I just wanted to express my gratitude. My face feels like it's on fire. Leave the rest to me. Go to Duke Valdek's mansion. Once you're out of here, it's straight ahead to the left, Aid instructed, his expression tinged with amusement. T thank you so much. I stuttered eager to escape this awkward situation. I staggered out of the Adventurer's Guild, my legs trembling with each step. Volume 02 Chapter 08 Having bid farewell to Instructor Aid, I stood in front of the entrance to the Comprehensive Guild, shaking my head to shift my focus. All right, if Instructor Aid's directions were correct, then if I continue straight ahead to the left, I should reach the residence of Duke of Aldec, right? As I strolled through the cityscape towards Duke of Aldec's mansion, the building he mentioned came into view. There it is. After uttering those words, I hastened my steps towards the front of the mansion. It's been a while since I last met Duke Valdek. Excuse me, guards. Approaching the front of the mansion, I addressed the two individuals standing equipped with weapons. They both turned their attention towards me simultaneously. They're probably guards hired by Duke Valdek to protect the mansion, right? It would be embarrassing if I got the wrong mansion. Do you need something from Duke Valdek? Yes. I would like to see Duke Valdek. Is he available now? For some reason, the two exchanged glances before turning back to me. Excuse us, but are you Lady Elrina? Why yes, that's correct. Upon hearing my response, the two of them inexplicably shimmered with excitement. Just as we suspected. We'll inform Duke Valdek right away. Let's go, partner. Yeah. With that declaration, the guards opened the gate and dashed off towards the mansion together. Wait, hold on. What about the security here? they're gone. The gates wide open. As I was speaking, they came back already. That was fast. Lady Elrina, please come inside. Nelson is waiting for you in the guest room, so we'll guide you there. Wait, did this person just say we? Um, what about the security here? Once again, the two exchanged glances before turning to me. Are these two really close? Don't worry, Lady Elrina. We've got it covered. Just like before, you can quickly go to the guest room and then back to the gate. Do you expect me to rush to the guest room and then rush back to the gate? In front of Duke Valdeck. That's rude, isn't it? Once again, they exchanged glances before facing me. Could they please stop this synchronized behavior? Hey? That's not good. What should we do, brother? Are you stupid? Just one of you can take her to the guest room normally. Which one of us should stay behind? Are you seriously asking me? I'm fed up with these people. I'm starting to feel exhausted. What are you two talking about? It's decided that one of you will take care of the guest, right? Huh? I heard a voice from the mansion. I shifted my gaze from the guards to the mansion door, where a dapper man in a black suit stood. He stepped forward before the guards and gave me a courteous smile and a nod. Nice to meet you. I am Meldon Gordon, butler serving under Duke Valdek. I shall be at your service, Lady Elrina. Nice to meet you, Meldon San. I'm Elrina. I must acknowledge his knowledge of my name but I can't forget to be polite. It's important to start and end with courtesy, a bad first impression can lead to trouble later. Now, Lady Elrina, please allow me to escort you to the guest room. Yes, of course. Wow. The garden is beautifully maintained. I've truly stepped into a noble's home. Ah, 
Lying down on that grass looks so comfortable. But I bet I'd get scolded if I actually did it. Lost in my thoughts, I arrived at the mansion door. Please, come inside. Meldon San opened the door and gestured for me to enter beside him. Wow, he's a pro. A skilled butler stands before me, not just any ordinary servant. This is amazing. I'm touched. I, I'm coming in. I said that and stepped inside the mansion. Phew. It's a beautiful mansion. Yes. The servants clean it every day. Wow. Not a speck of dust, not a single stain on the hallway floor. The servants to Givaldek has employed might be of high caliber. Ignoring my dazzled state, Meldon San stood by the door two paces ahead from where I stood. Knock, knock. What is it? Nelson Sama, Lady Elrina is here. Let her in. After opening the door, Mr. Meldon turned towards me. Lady Elrina, please. Oh, yes. After replying, I entered the guest room. What? This is amazing. In front of me were a simple desk and chair, and beyond that, a wide window overlooking the garden, allowing one to enjoy tea while admiring the scenery. The room was minimally decorated, giving it a clean feeling, and it seemed to be well maintained, perhaps clean daily, with the furniture neatly arranged. I couldn't help but feel attached to this room. Hee <laughs> hee, it's been a while, Elrina. How do you like this guest room? Oh, it's been a long time. Duke of Aldeck. It's a very lovely room. Duke of Aldeck nodded happily. I thought so. This room is the most cherished place in the mansion, our pride and joy. I'm glad you like it. As Duke of Aldeck appeared delighted, I noticed the woman sitting beside him. Um, Duke of Aldeck? What is it? Is the lady next to you your wife? I said, gazing at the busty beauty with red hair. Wow, she's got a bigger chest than me. What cup size is she? Oh. I forgot to introduce her. The person sitting next to me is my wife, Anya. The woman, Anya, began to greet me as she looked at me. Nice to meet you, I am Anya Diavaldek. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Pleased to meet you, Anya Sama. My name is Elrina. Now that introductions are out of the way, Elrina, please sit there. Yes. After replying, I sat in the chair opposite Duke Valdek. Now, Elrina, there are many things I want to discuss, but first, let me thank you again for what you did. Thank you for protecting me, Elrina. T thank you for thanking me. Meow. My face, my face is burning. Thank you for saving my husband. If it weren't for you, I don't know what would have happened by now. Meow. Mew. Mew. Stop it already. I'm going to lose it. Anya, your true self is showing. Oh, it's fine. Since she's not a noble, it's okay to speak casually. But... She's as bashful as I imagined. This is entertaining to watch. Am I being toyed with? I'm sorry, Elrina. Anya is always like this. I am not bothered. Meow. Let's not overthink this. Let's not overthink this. Meow. Volume 02 Chapter 09 Duke of Aldeck took a sip of his tea before speaking. Listen, Elrina, we've found remnants of the debtor group. What fantastic news. If they've been found, we can capture them alive. But... Every single one of them was found dead. What? They were all dead? Yes, each of them had their heads brutally severed. According to the soldiers, they were ambushed by bandits. That's what the reports I received indicate. What on earth could this mean? No, there's not enough information to draw conclusions. I wanted to hear your opinion on the stutter situation. My opinion? Please, go ahead if you think it will help. Well, I'm not sure how useful my opinion will be. Firstly, about the condition of the bodies. Wait a moment. What is it, Elrina? Could you please provide the details of how the bodies were discovered? It would help with understanding. Of course, without the context, it's impossible to make any hypotheses. And more information would lead to better theories. Unfortunately, those details weren't included in the report. What? And besides, I only had the information from these documents. I don't know anything beyond that. Unbelievable. Well, there's no use complaining to Duke Valdek about it. Understood. Please continue. They were discovered northeast of Gozace. There were ten bodies in total, four with wounds resembling stab marks, two charred beyond recognition, one with evidence of a sword piercing the chest, and three completely unharmed except for their missing heads. As I mentioned earlier, our soldiers pursuing the debtors were ambushed by bandits and completely wiped out. That's the conclusion they reached. It does make sense logically but I feel like something's being overlooked. What are your thoughts on this, Elrina? Duke of Aldeck, may I speak honestly? Of course. Is the information in the documents truly all we have? I'm sorry, but yes, that's all there is. I feel tension building in my hands as I place them on my knees. This is getting tedious. Additionally, it's noted that two swords and a mithril armor, 
believed to belong to the debtor's vice guild master, are missing. Do you perhaps find anything suspicious about these documents? I believe this presents a good opportunity for our country, so allow me to be blunt. I close my eyes, take a deep breath, then address to Givaldek. Firstly, the content of the soldier's report is lacking. If I were their superior, I'd have them rewrite it. Why is that? While the report mentions the condition of the bodies, it fails to describe their positions at the scene. Were they lying on their backs, faces down, or scattered around? These details should have been included. Is that really necessary? Yes, it is. It helps the reader visualize the scene better. Duke of Aldeck, based on these documents alone, can you imagine how the dead or remnants met their end? Duke of Aldeck glances over the documents again before meeting my eyes. No, I can't. Furthermore, why was it concluded that the debtors were killed by bandits? Perhaps because a piece of mithril armor and two swords were taken? And one body showed signs of a sword wound, suggesting a confrontation with bandits. I see. After I spoke, I let out a sigh. What's with the sigh? After reviewing the report, I have three questions that trouble me. Go on. Firstly, would bandits be satisfied with stealing just one suit of armor and two swords? What about any money they might have had? Duke of Aldeck rubs his chin in thought. Quality armor and swords fetch a good price. Maybe they thought that was enough. Wait a minute. He furrows his brow. In the past, bandits would only take wallets and valuables, then flee. But this time, it's different. Something about this incident doesn't sit right. You see, just as I suspected. It's strange for a thief to have stolen only this much, Lady Anya remarked, echoing my own doubts. Indeed, as Anya mentioned. So what's the second question? I inquired. Yes, the second concerns the state of the corpses. The state of the corpses? Duke of Aldeck rubbed his chin thoughtfully. The whole like wounds were likely inflicted by my attacks, but... But? While wounds from swords and burnt bodies are understandable, what about the others? particularly those without any wounds. Have you considered how they might have been killed? I pressed. Normally, one would expect thieves to crush skulls or sever heads first. But I can't imagine that happening. Huh. What? Could it be? It seemed the couple had just realized a crucial oversight. As I pondered the state of the corpses, it struck me that they were felled with a single blow. It felt like the work of a skilled assassin. And perhaps the heads were removed to dispose of any witnesses, or as a precautionary measure. That's my theory. I explained. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Duke of Aldeck exclaimed. I, too, overlooked it. It should have been obvious with some thought. Lady Anya admitted. While the two exchanged wide-eyed glances, I had no intention of halting the discussion. May I continue? I asked. Oh, yes. Please continue, Arlena. Duke of Aldeck responded, his hands trembling as he reached for his cup of tea. He seemed visibly shaken. The final point is related to our earlier discussion. Who do you think could have done such a thing? I inquired. I don't think it was a thief. Could it be Langot's accomplices? The Dark Guild wasn't involved. I'm not sure. How about you, Nelson? Lady Anya pondered. I suspected it might be the Blumia slave traders or Grubeld, but they're both apprehended now. Besides, Grubel didn't have any other nobles aiding him at that time. I'm sorry, but I'm unsure. Arlena, what are your thoughts? Nelson replied. Both seem to have overlooked someone important. Levias, I stated. At the mention of that name, their faces stiffened. Do you recall the day Duke of Aldeck apprehended Grubel? I asked. Yes, I remember. What about it? Duke of Aldeck responded. It's hard to believe that someone so meticulous could fail a mission. Or, to be more precise, allow the remnants of debtor whom he knew by face, to roam freely, I pointed out. So, you're implying that Levias dealt with the remnants of dinner? Duke of Aldeck clarified. It's purely speculation on my part, but I believe Levias may be involved, I concluded. After staring at his documents for a moment, Duke of Aldeck turned to me and began to speak. Arlena, thank you. Consulting with you was the right decision. I'm heading to the palace now. About the discrepancies in these documents. Oh, what's this? Nelson? This child is completely flustered, Lady Anya remarked. Ah, a a apologies, ma'am, I stuttered, trying to regain my composure. To get back to the matter at hand, please ensure the investigation thoroughly documents whether a wallet was stolen, the sequence of events leading to its discovery, the positions and conditions of the corpses, and any items found or left behind. Additionally, though still under investigation, focus on Levia's whereabouts. I suspect he may have some backup so advised Duke of Aldeck to proceed with caution. That's all from me. I took a moment to collect my thoughts before continuing. Dot understood. After Duke of Aldeck replied to me, 
he rolled up the documents and tied them with a string. I apologize, but I must leave my seat. Melton, please prepare. Of course. After Duke Valdeck stood up, he left the room with Mr. Melton. Hey, Arlena. Yes, what is it, Lady Anya? I've seen various people before, but you seem far from ordinary, I might say. Lady Anya leaned closer across the table. With Lady Anya so near, the pleasant scent of her perfume tickled my nose. What exactly are you? Some kind of spy from another country? I'm just an ordinary girl. However, however, I was raised as a boy from a young age and trained as a military disciple, so I can't really judge whether I'm an ordinary girl or not. I'm not lying, huh? Lady Anya looked puzzled, but I continued. I still feel uncomfortable wearing skirts, so even outside of work, I still wear pants. I've never really thought about fashion either. Dot I see. You've had quite an unusual life more than I imagined. Phew, I managed to avoid revealing my true identity. Well then, we'll be off. Take care. Farewell. After Duke Valdeck glanced into the guest room, he walked towards the entrance. Well, now that the conversation's over, I should be going too. Are you leaving already? Yes, I need to find accommodation. I see. Well, if you head out of this house and walk to the left, You'll find the Silver Dragon Inn on the right side of the road. It's a good place to stay, huh? How does he know about the inn? Well, whatever. Guide this lady to the outside of the estate. With that, a maid who was near the door approached me. This way, please. I will show you out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Goodbye then. No, thank you for the enlightening conversation. Let's have tea leisurely next time you come. Please visit again, Arlena. After bidding farewell to Lady Anya. I stood up and followed the maid out of the room. As I left the mansion with the maid, she paused at the gate and turned back to address me. Arlena Sama, we eagerly await your visit, she said. Why is that? I'm just a commoner unlike Duke Valdeck and his company, I replied. He he, the maid chuckled, placing a hand over her mouth before continuing. You saved Lord Nelson's life, and the couple seems fond of you. Besides, us servants have taken a liking to you as well. So. Duke Valdeck's group has taken a liking to me. Um, thank you, I replied. Lord Nelson's words were true. Among humans, your snow white hair and amethyst eyes are seen only in fairy tales, she continued. Huh? Only in fairy tales? Um, are my hair and eye colors rare? I inquired. Yes, Arlena Sama. Your hair and especially your eyes are quite rare. I've never seen anything like them before. And Arlena Sama. You're very cute. She complimented. Meow. I recoiled at the unexpected words. W. What are you saying? I stuttered. Arlena Sama, I mean it. You truly have a lovely appearance, she insisted. You. Meow. I blurted out. She's just flattering me to mess with me. He <laughs> he, it would be rude not to stop Arlena Sama here. Please, we look forward to your next visit, she said, chuckling. You. Sorry. Got to go. I mumbled, hastily making my way through the gate towards the Silver Dragon Pavilion while the maid, still in her uniform, watched with an amused smile. He <laughs> he. She's really amusing. She possesses both fighting prowess and intelligence, not to mention actual combat experience, the maid remarked. But most of all, her hair and eyes. I thought such beings no longer existed. A human with white hair, an uncommon color, and eyes as purple as the tales say, she continued. When I heard about her appearance from father, I was skeptical but seeing her in person was truly remarkable. She's truly beautiful and mysterious. That shy demeanor of hers was so charming, she added. With such looks, there will surely be those who desire her. Father himself seems keen on welcoming her into our home, so it won't be easy to simply hand her over to someone else. Lady Alifa, please, come inside the mansion, a voice interrupted. As my brother says, please come in, another added. He <laughs> he. Understood. Shall we have tea with mother once we're inside? She suggested, starting towards the mansion. Truly, I find myself wanting her too. How shall we arrange for her to marry my brother? Oh, but then I'd lose my source of amusement. Perhaps adopting her might be a better option? Yes, let's discuss it with mother. Alifa, the maid, exclaimed cheerfully as she entered the mansion. At the same time, Uck! That maid, I should keep an eye on her, I muttered to myself as I walked along the road recalling my conversation with her earlier and her curious interest in my appearance. Right, I should contact the goddess. I realized, while walking, I opened my friend list and dialed the goddess. Hello, Arlena Chan, what's up? She answered. Thank goodness, the call went through this time. Goddess, do you have a moment? I have something to ask, 
I said, wait a moment. A, oops, my bad about the Go 19B incident. I just wanted to surprise you, you know. And since Meltna's Chan already scolded me, don't scold me too. Okay ee -e. What kind of rage did Meltina San unleash to get the Almighty to react like this? Oh, God, I didn't connect on the radio to talk about that. Huh, really? Phew, that's a relief. So, what do you want to know? Um, is my appearance, specifically my hair and eye color, unusual? Huh? Hair and eye color? Hold on a second. Huh? Could it be that the Almighty doesn't know? Oh, I found it. According to the records. W what? Records? Wait a minute. What's wrong? Isn't it strange for the Almighty to use records? Aren't gods supposed to have omniscient knowledge? Even gods are just like regular humans. They understand the basics of their world, but when it comes to specifics, there are things they don't know. Imagine if I asked you about detailed events from the Uchimomoyama period in your past life. You wouldn't know, right? Impossible. I don't understand at all. Because I didn't live in that era. I'm sorry, God. I was trapped in light novel knowledge. Yeah, as long as you understand. So, why use records, you're probably wondering. Let me explain. Our messengers go around the world, gather information, learn from schools in those countries, and then compile that information into records sent to me. That's how detailed information ends up in the records with me. But, but, was there a problem? These records are messy, like there's oil spilled on them. The words are all squiggly and hard to read. And it looks like there might be missing parts. Literus Chan. Who authorized this compilation of records? Huh? That kid. Call Elrena Chan over after she's done talking with Elrena Chan. There's a problem in heaven that's completely different from what I expected. Anyway, Elrena Chan, it's a continuation of what we were talking about earlier. And no 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 no. Are those records okay? They're fine. Look, they're a bit messy, but the basics are correct. It's fine, right? Literus Chan. See? Even the Almighty is worried, right? Yeah, it seems fine. The basics seem to be correct. Ugh. Um, I see. Please explain. Alright, I'll tell you. Among non-humans, there are people with white hair, but rather than white, it's more like gray. No one in this world has the pure white hair you've seen. Of course, there's also the matter of aging causing white hair. And people with amethyst colored eyes like yours are only you in this world. Wow. Just by mentioning hair and eye color, they can immediately identify me. And Elrena Chan's hair and eye colors resemble a clan that went extinct 300 years ago. An extinct clan? Yeah, a clan known as the White Purple Clan. I'm curious about those people. What kind of clan were they? Well, that clan. There were only about 50 of them, and they were said to be a clan close to the gods. That wasn't actually the case, though. They were called close to the gods and there were only 50 of them. They lived in a place where people rarely went, built a village and lived quietly. But they got caught up in a large-scale war and the clan disappeared. The last member of that clan was executed by the enemy country after being captured, even though they weren't involved in the war. It's really sad, isn't it? Wow, that's a heavy story. So be careful. Most people believe the White Purple Clan is extinct, but because Elrena Chan resembles them, there might be people who come near believing she's part of that clan. I see. Thank you for explaining. I have to be careful not to be mistaken for that clan from now on. Yeah, yeah, glad I could help. By the way, I wonder where Elrena Chan is headed? What? I've been walking towards the Silver Dragon Pavilion for accommodations, is there an issue? Elrena inquired. Well, you see, you've already passed the Silver Dragon Pavilion. The voice on the other end revealed. What? What did you say? Elrena exclaimed. Halting in her tracks. Realizing her oversight, she halted in her tracks. I can't believe I missed it, she muttered. You were too engrossed in conversation to notice, huh? Ha. Huh. Well, you'll find it around the second crossroad past where you are now. Good luck. And do let us know if you run into any trouble. Oh, this is amusing. I must tell everyone about this. The voice chuckled before abruptly ending the transmission. Damn it. Elrina cursed under her breath feeling foolish for being duped by the god. And to add insult to injury, the god's parting words left her with more questions than answers. Freaking hell, she exclaimed, turning on her heels and sprinting back along the path she came. With determination etched on her face, Elrena retraced her steps, determined not to let this setback deter her. Volume 02 Chapter 11 Huff. Huff. Phew. Standing before the Silver Dragon Pavilion now, I couldn't help but realize something belatedly, did I really need to sprint at full throttle all this way? What on earth was I thinking? Feels like I've been toyed with by the gods. Oh well, 
Never mind. Let's just go in and get a room, I'm used aloud. Pushing open the doors of the Silver Dragon Pavilion, I was greeted by an elderly lady behind the counter who looked at me and spoke, Welcome. Welcome to the Silver Dragon Pavilion. Could I see your card, please? Ah, so she was the attendant. Ah, yes, I replied, handing over my comprehensive guild card. Thank you, she said inspecting the card briefly before returning it with a smile no issues here will you be resting or staying overnight staying overnight i confirmed staying overnight it'll be three copper coins per day five copper coins with meals included however if you book for a week it'll be 20 copper coins with meals included how would you like to proceed 20 copper coins for a week plus meals did sound like a good deal i'll take the week please as i handed her two silver coins from my inventory the attendant took them and hung a number tag on the wall behind her counter. It seemed to indicate whether rooms were available or in use. Understood. Here's the key to your room. If you're heading out, please leave the key at the counter before leaving. We might have to report to the guards in some cases. Got it. Please make yourself at home. Lima. Show our guest to room 203. With that command, the elderly lady disappeared into the back followed by a cheerful yes, from a sweet voice. Before me stood a young girl with a ribbon tied around her head. Dear guest, I'll guide you to your room. Follow me. Hey, Lima. You got the last bit wrong again. Come on, follow me. Quickly. Oh, sorry. Grandma. What are you saying in front of a guest? Honestly. Even after being told to mind your manners. Why? What's happening to Grandma's tone? Is that how she usually talks? And this kid looks like she's about to cry. Oh well can't be helped. It's okay, really. She's just a child. I don't mind. Lima looked at me with a bright smile, but the elderly lady glared at me. Guest, this child tends to take advantage if she's spoiled too much, so try not to spoil her too much. All right. Duly noted. With a wry smile towards the old lady, I turned to Lima and extended my hand. All right, Lima. Lead the way to my room. Okay. Lima cheerfully replied and grabbed my hand, pulling me along this way follow me all right all right oh excuse me cough cough ahem cough i'll follow lima properly so please don't rush feeling the weight of disapproving eyes behind me i let lima guide me to my room her grip surprisingly strong here's your room miss feel free to use it as you like but be careful not to break anything if you need anything just call for assistance got it Lima, thanks for your help. You're such a good girl. As I patted her head and she closed her eyes in delight. Hee <laughs> hee, tickles. This kid is too adorable. What is this feeling? Is this maternal instinct kicking in? Lima, how much longer are you taking? Hurry up and help me here. Yes, Grandma. Okay, Miss. Lima's off now. Yeah, Lima. Do your best with your chores. As I withdrew my hand from hers, I waved and she waved back before dashing off energetically. Watching her go. I felt a surge of anger towards the old hag at the front desk. Damn it. That old hag. She's ruining my moment of happiness. I'll make sure to get her out of the way next time. Ugh. But there's no use getting angry here. I need to think about my plans for the future. And now, let's sit on the bed. This bed is so soft. It's completely different from the last place I stayed at. Let's lie down and check it out. Wow. It's so soft and comfy. And it smells nice too. I'm in heaven. It feels lonely without someone to crack a joke. I just realized that. After relishing the comfort of the bed for a brief moment, I sat up and started thinking about my future plans. Now, my plan was to earn money and buy a house in the capital of Redgolm after some activities in Redgolm. But thanks to Duke of Aldeck, that plan got accelerated. After the Grubeld incident, I spent some time poring over maps and documents and came up with a plan of my own. I intended to establish a base in Redgilm, located almost in the center of the Lebland continent, before venturing into various other places. Once we've seen various parts of Lithgartha during our travels, we'll move on to visit the neighboring empire, republic, and magic country. Deciding on the order based on our feelings at the time is fine, but first, we need to establish a base, meaning we have to buy a house. So, what would be my ideal home? An ideal one-story house in a safe area. In any case, we must buy a house during our stay. Let's go to the real estate agent to get some property recommendations. Come to think of it, I've never seen a real estate agent in this world before. What should I do? Ah, the comprehensive guild should know. If that's the case, tomorrow, along with the rewards for the orcs, I'll ask the guildmaster where I can find a real estate agent. Whirring sound. Come to think of it, 
I haven't had lunch. Since I can't borrow a kitchen, should I just have some cup noodles? After opening the menu and navigating to the food section in the store, I purchase some cup noodles along with an electric kettle and mineral water. However, even though the gods have modified this world to be usable, it still feels strange that there's no outlet for the electric kettle. If this existed on Earth, how much cheaper would the electricity bill be? While pondering this, I fill the electric kettle with water from the mineral water bottle, close the lid, and switch on the electric kettle. As I'm about to open the cup noodles, the door suddenly swings open. Big sis, there's a guest here who wants to see you. I'll have to teach Lima Chan about manners later. What's the guest like? Yeah, it's Sir Kishin. The knights? Probably here to meet Girl San and the others. I know them, so I'll go meet them now. Yeah. Huh? Big sis, what's that? Lima Chan points at the cup noodles. Oh. These? They're food. It's a convenient dish that you just need to open and pour hot water into. Wow. That's cool. Are you going to eat it? I was planning to, but I need to meet the knights first. Lima Chan, come with me. Okay. Lima Chan takes my hand and starts pulling me. I'm here. Hey, Lima Chan. Remember, I'm a guest. Is it okay to treat a guest like this? Lima Chan stops abruptly and looks at me with a strangely anxious expression. No. In that case, do you have something to say to me? I'm sorry. Well, if she can apologize sincerely, then I'll let it slide. Alright, since you've apologized, I'll forgive you. Just be more careful next time, okay? As I say this, I ruffle Lima Chan's hair. Yeah, Lima will be careful. Alright, now take me to the knight's place. While holding Lima Chan's hand, I don't rush her this time, but she guides me to the entrance of the store. As I turn to look towards the counter where I hear voices, I see Girl San, Amy San, Keith San, and Lizlina San standing there. What on earth did you do? If you're going to arrest this guy, do it quickly. Wait a minute. Why is this old lady treating me like a criminal? That's not it. We just came to meet her because we know her. Keith San backs me up. I'm really grateful for that. I see, then I'm relieved. If you're not causing any trouble here, then do as you please. The old lady turns away and starts reading her newspaper. Where did that sales smile from earlier go, old lady? Long time no see, Arlena. While I'm thinking about that, Girl San approaches me and extends his hand. Nice to see you again, Girl San. I shake the hand he's offering. We heard about what happened with Bigger's group. Thank you. Wa? I stiffen at those words. Arlena San is still as bashful as ever. But, that's one of your charming traits, you know? Uh, this time, I slump down and sit on the floor. Keith, you can't tease Erlina Chan like that. I was just honestly complimenting her, you know? I it's okay. It's not your fault. I managed to stand up, shaking my head from side to side. H how did you find me here? Ah, well, you see. I asked Lady Anya about your whereabouts. She mentioned that you might be here. Keith replied, turning towards me. Ah, I see. Hey there, L. Have you had your meal yet? Lisrina San. I was planning to have it later. Then why don't you join us? It'll be fun, right? An invitation for a meal. Well, I don't see any reason to refuse. Sure, I'll join you. I have some things I want to discuss with Girl San anyway. Alright, if that's settled, let's go together. I'll take you to a great place. Oh, and don't worry about paying for yourself. I'll take care of it. Huh? Girl is treating us? Girl San, that's not necessary. I can pay for my own meal. No. You owe it to me for what happened with Bika. I see. In that case, understood. Here's the key, Granny. I handed the key that I had kept in my pocket to the old lady, who took it with a bored expression. Alright then. Have a good time. Let's go, Girl San. Yeah, follow me. Elrina left the inn with Girl and the others, heading towards the restaurant, unaware that danger was slowly closing in on them, unnoticed by anyone. Volume 02 Chapter 12 Damn it. A hooded figure stood alone atop the dimly lit grassy plain, kicking at a stone on the ground in an attempt to distract himself from his frustration, but his mood showed no signs of lifting. Damn it, damn 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 it. Those damn heroes. Straightening his back, he screamed before bringing his fist down towards the ground, only to exacerbate his frustration as he ended up hurting his hand with no meaningful outcome. Sigh. Well, it's fine. It's not like losing to them can be helped. It was just a flaw in my plan. Next time I face them, I just need to fight smarter. However, the man pondered how to redeem his failure in killing the heroes. If I return like this, I'll just be a laughing stock to them, and what face should I even show? Think, how do I clear this disgrace? And after pondering, he arrived at a dreadful plan. With a sneer, 
he raised his staff to the sky. Objects under my command, reveal your form and obey me, summon. As he uttered those words and drove the staff into the ground, numerous magic circles appeared. From within these circles emerged people, wolves, goblins, and various zombies. He he he. If the heroes have returned to the Empire, then why not crush this place before they arrive? Let's obliterate the Red Gum Kingdom, founded as proof of alliance between the three major kingdoms. In his mind, he envisioned soldiers struggling against zombies, citizens fleeing and being devoured, and the despair of the heroes witnessing the fall of Red Gum Kingdom. Yes, the perfect plan of despair. The man's ability allowed him to turn his victims into zombies, minions he could control at will. And now, he was using these minions to devise an even more terrifying plan. It's perfect. Yes, perfect. If this succeeds, I'll have earned favor with him. I'll use all my power to destroy this kingdom. And then, I'll turn every living being in Red Gum Kingdom into zombies and attack the Empire. As he watched the ever-increasing number of zombies emerging from the magic circles, he felt the greatness of his power once again. At this rate, I can strategize a night. Ha ha ha. For my honor, and for him. Elena's perspective dash. After enjoying a meal with Mr. Gull and the others, I returned to my room to relax and read a light novel. It's already 4 o'clock. The meal was enjoyable though. I wonder if they'll invite me again? I've been having more fulfilling days than when I was in class, but I wonder how my classmates are doing. I hope they're not doing anything foolish in this world just because it's different. Just as I was lost in thought, a communication came through from the god. Hello, Elena Chan. Are you okay right now? Oh. Yes. The fact that the gods seemed flustered intrigued me. What could be the matter? I'm sorry for the suddenness, but I have a request for you. Please, I need you to solve it right away. Hey, calm down. I can't say yes to something without knowing what it is. Ah. S sorry. I got flustered. Well, I need your help. Please, right now. What's the request? If it's weird, I'll hang up. There are a massive number of zombies about 800 meters west of the capital city where you are. It seems like they're heading towards the capital. What? Are you serious? Can something so absurd really happen? This isn't an event in an online game. It's true. If we don't do something soon, the capital will be in ruins. The urgency in his voice sounded genuine. Should I consult with the guild? No. There's a high chance they won't listen to a low-ranked like me. And it's unlikely that Mr. Gull and the others can communicate with the soldiers guarding the palace. Heck, I'm not even sure if Mr. Gull is around. Ugh, seriously. There's no use just thinking about it. I have to go and see for myself. Then, can I assume you understand my request? I'll take it that way. But, if this turns out to be a lie, I'll report it to Melty. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Elena Chan. After disconnecting the communication, I donned the upper and lower attire of Frentax, equipped the plate carrier, knee pads, and CQC holster. I strapped on my beloved firearms, the Ace 32, 7.62 x 39mm, and Jericho 941 PSL, 9mm Parabellum. Lastly, I checked the safety of my magazines and MK382 grenades before stowing them in my pouch. With my headset secured on my head, I was fully equipped. Headset check. Magazines loaded. Ready to roll. With the key to this room in hand, I exited, locking the door behind me, and made my way to the counter. Excuse me, ma'am. What is it? The elderly woman, perhaps bored, turned towards me with a sleepy expression. I'll have to cancel tonight's dinner as I need to head out to the grasslands. Upon hearing my words, the drowsiness seemed to vanish from the woman's face as she stared at me wide-eyed. What nonsense are you spouting? Do you even understand the dangers of venturing into the grasslands at night? This woman knew that the risk of encountering dangerous monsters increased significantly at night. I understand. And I faced them before, so I'll be fine. Is that so? Yes. Besides, I'm in a hurry to get going. I retrieved the key from my pocket and placed it on the counter. I'll leave the key here. HMPH. Whatever happens to you is none of my concern. Do as you please. But, let me tell you one thing. Is it the classic line, don't you dare die? Our business hours end at 9. If you're late, you'll have to camp outside. Wait, what? And how does she know the time if there's no clock in this inn? It's puzzling. But I'll set it aside for now since I'm in a rush. Understood. I'll be off then. With that said, I left the inn and headed towards the western gate at a sprint. Upon passing through the gate, I entered the grasslands, which were dimly lit unlike the city. It'll probably get even darker in about an hour when the sun sets completely. In the dim light, 
I stopped a little away from the city and surveyed my surroundings. I should be fine bringing out a vehicle around here. I brought up the menu and selected the MRZR4 from the garage before hopping in. Just then, a communication came through from the Almighty. Hello, what's the matter, Almighty? Elrina Chan, I'm going to mark the enemy's location for you to head towards. But be careful, there are a lot of them, so don't do anything reckless. Understood. Thank you. No problem at all. Well then, talk to you later. I ended the communication with the Almighty and checked the map. It revealed that I would reach my destination if I followed the road. Now, let's go. With those words, I started the engine of the MRZR4 and headed towards the marked location. Driving is always so much fun. Oh no. There are way more enemies than I expected. I arrived at the destination just as the sun was setting. Well, to be precise. I stopped about 500 meters away from the actual destination and sent out a UAV to the marked spot. The camera attached to the UAV transmitted images of the enemies below in black and white thermal imaging mode. This doesn't look good. It's all white. Like a vast, white sea. I had a bad feeling about this midway. The computer warned, multiple reactions detected, and seriously, this is practically a military force. Huh? Another communication from the Almighty and this time it's with a screen. Ah, Elrina Chan. What do you think now? Do you believe me? Yes, I'm sorry for doubting you. It's okay if you believe me. So, Elrina Chan, what are you going to do about these enemies? There are 800 monsters, and they're still increasing. Will you run? Running away might be the best option, but it's not possible to escape. Why not? I just can't leave girl and the others to fend for themselves. Besides, I need to get back and report the crisis to the capital but time is of the essence. I need to return to the capital and report to the integrated guild. However, while the guild and the national army are mustering their forces to eradicate the threat, there's a high probability that these creatures will move to another town and launch an attack while we're preparing. Damn it. If only I had realized this sooner. I see. This calls for something special, doesn't it? Something special? What do you mean? The power of modern weaponry. Come on, let's use helicopters, tanks anything to wipe them out. The god smirks at me, but, ah, god, that's not feasible. The god's expression turns to one of shock as he raises his voice at me. Why not? I've given you power, why won't you use it? Is this some kind of self-imposed challenge? No, it's not like that. Then why? Well, for one, I can't handle a tank by myself. Then just call in a helicopter and sweep them away. Probably, but I think we'd run out of ammo, including missiles before taking down 800 of them. Plus, the scariest part is the landing. It's difficult to land on a grassy plane like this in the middle of the night without any support. It's not impossible, but the chances of accidents are higher. Um, but your helicopters and tanks don't have ammo limits. Furthermore, if we are flying without cover, we'll be sitting ducks. If there's a creature that can fly among them, we'd be surrounded, shot down, and crash landed. Then, just keep shooting from afar with the tanks, no need for a driver. God, who's going to load the shells while I'm shooting? Oh, yes, it takes time to fire, then leave the seat, load, and return, especially in such a cramped tank. There's a mortar that requires at least one more person to stabilize the bipod. So, currently, with the tanks and helicopters we have in the hangar, we're not in a state where we can dominate the battlefield. This isn't working. Let's go back to the integrated guild and report. No. There's another way. Huh? Really? Shall we resort to the old-fashioned way of fighting? After saying that, I quickly begin to prepare. Volume 02 Chapter 13 As the man surveyed the zombies he summoned from his magic circle, he struggled to contain the surge within him, his body tensing up. Unable to withstand it any longer, he stretched out and gazed up at the sky. Ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha ha. My power exceeds even my imagination. He exclaimed. With around a thousand zombies at his command, he could easily overrun the royal capital. I've nearly depleted my magic power, and it took some time. But with this number, it should be enough to devastate the capital of Rizgilram. Indeed, he had not only humanoid zombies but also gathered different types, from goblins to wolves and orcs. Nothing was impossible now. For this Sada, I shall take the head of King Rizgilram. What's that sound? Despite scanning the surroundings, as it was midnight, he couldn't find the source of the noise but noticed an odd star in the sky. That star. Seems strange for a shooting star, huh? It's falling. And then, with a tremendous explosion, his consciousness was blown away. He should have realized the danger approaching him. 
but it was too late. Ellie Ru's perspective. Now then, first, after ensuring the safety of the surroundings with the FGM-148, I set the Javelin missile to top attack mode. Releasing the safety, I project the target location marked by the UAV onto the Javelin's monitor and lock onto the target. And, here comes the main event. Fire. I pull the trigger simultaneously, launching the missile towards the enemy. The missile ascends high into the air after launch, then heads straight towards the target, descending rapidly the moment it reaches overhead. And upon impact, it explodes. Direct hit with the Javelin. Good. Thanks to the unique feature of the UAV and FPS, which shares information with my radar and other weapons, I managed to mark the target with the laser sight. Phase 1 of the operation successful. Phase 1 of the operation, firing a missile right at the center, causing confusion among the enemies. Well, whether monsters would get confused or not remains to be seen. After firing the FGM-148 Javelin, I adjust my night vision goggles and hop onto the gun turret of the Humvee 1151, aiming the GO-19B, using 12.7x99mm rounds, at the enemy a kilometer away. Shall we proceed with phase 2 of the operation? Pressing both buttons simultaneously, the GO-19B unleashes a barrage of bullets towards the enemy, creating a sound like the <laughs> Wow, the kill score is going through the roof. I can't quite tell what's happening from here, but probably because of the monsters using 12.7mm ammunition, bodies are getting blown apart. It's become a world where hitting the target is almost guaranteed. Are they starting to notice us already? The horde of zombies seems to have sensed the direction of the attack and is heading towards us. Alright, as planned. Don't panic, just need to draw them in closer. As I continue to rain bullets from the GO-19B towards the zombies, I glance at the radar to confirm. Indeed, there seems to be variation among them. Some are fast, while others are slow. The fast ones have already covered about 80 meters from their original position. Well, that was anticipated. Except for the absence of flying ones. I refrain from targeting the fast ones for now and keep showering bullets towards the slower ones further back, steadily taking down the enemies. Is it about time? While continuing to fire the GO-19B, I sneak glances at the radar, timing my actions. Alright, now's the time. UGV deployment. Opening the menu, I press the buttons to activate two armadillo UGVs I had hidden on the left side immediately setting them to auto mode. Understood. Initiating firing. Please be careful not to enter the line of fire. As the computer speaks, the UGVs, stationed about 600 meters away, come to life. One equipped with an F and N2 HB QCB, using 12.7x99mm rounds, and the other with a Saab Defense MK.19 Mod 3, using 40mm grenades, they start moving according to the preset path. Yes circling around to the left side of the enemy from my perspective. This sets the stage for a crossfire. This is an open plane with no hiding spots, so they're bound to become targets. The zombies, originally heading towards me, seem to be confused, hesitating and darting around. They're probably debating whether to come after me or the UGVs. But observing them, something feels off. Do zombies possess intelligence? No. Let's stop thinking about it for now. Because all that's left is to finish them off in one fell swoop. Bullets steer through zombie flesh, explosions engulf and hurl them. My UGVs and I trample over the zombies in various ways. Is it almost over? I cease firing and check the radar. The once numerous horde of zombies has dwindled to a countable few. Few. The operation went according to plan. But this. I gaze down at the GO-19B, now piled with spent casings and hot barrels. Realizing just how long I've been firing. Normally, firing this much wouldn't just lead to running out of ammo but also cause abnormalities requiring repair. And how many enemies did I kill? Well, forget about that. Let's deal with the remaining ones up close. The brass has disappeared, after all. Oh, but wait. Before that, I need to retrieve the claymores. After opening the menu, I press the button to remove the claymores. Attention. Once the claymores are removed, they cannot be returned to their original positions. Are you sure you want to remove them? Yes, no. I press yes and confirm that they've been removed from the map, then set the armadillos to arrive at the same location. After closing the menu, I move to the driver's seat of the Humvee 1151. Since the engine was already running, I shift the gear lever from P to D after applying the brakes and releasing the handbrake. Oh? Right, it's dangerous to drive without headlights at night. After saying that, 
I turn off the night vision goggles, lift them up, turn on the headlights, and set off. Ah, ah, huh? Why am I? Why am I lying here? I remember summoning the zombies to attack the royal capital, but where did my zombies go? As Sada lay on his back, he glanced around and saw the brutally slain zombies. And in that moment, everything came rushing back to him. Just before this happened, a star had fallen from the sky and struck him, assaulting his body. Grrr, ra. And then, like a volcano erupting from deep within him, the man unleashed his fury. And the man's anger exploded from the depths of his body like a volcanic eruption. Exclamation mark Ko. Ko. Ro. She e. They're killing. Absolutely hunting them down and killing them? What was that sound just now? Turning towards the direction of the unfamiliar sound, though it was dim and hard to discern, someone was systematically taking down the zombie summoned by the man along with a mysterious monster. Seeing this, the man glared at the figure with intense anger. GRR. GRRRRRRRR? Is that person the one responsible for what happened to the zombies? No, wait. G Could it be that they haven't realized I'm still alive? This might be my chance. SHH, SHH, SHH. Wait. Cough, cough. I'll tear that person who put me through this apart with my own hands, make them regret it to the fullest and then kill them. And even after turning them into zombies, I'll still make them do my bidding. Sada thought this as he tried to stand up, but his body wouldn't cooperate. Huh? Why? Why won't my body move? WH. What? He was shocked when he looked at his own hands. Because his right arm wasn't blown off anymore, and his left hand was torn to shreds and rendered useless. H hi. Unlike a moment ago, he now felt fear, the complete opposite of anger. Cough cough. Wah. What the? This is bad. I need to escape from here quickly, or I'll be killed. Struggling to get onto all fours from his supine position, he tried to flee, but they wouldn't let him escape. The mysterious monster noticed the man and turned its face towards him, and then, boom, 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 boom. Oh, the armadillo fired again. But man, the firing sound of MK.19 Mod 3 is so satisfying. And the exhilarating explosion, but, huh? Why am I surprised? Well, because the monster Guff took down earlier had points significantly higher than the other monsters. What? What did I just defeat? It's appreciated that the judgment of the defeated opponent is given, but it's a bit inconvenient that it only shows points and headshot judgments, so you don't know what type of monster you defeated, huh? Moreover, looking at the zombies I was about to shoot earlier, they were slowly approaching me, but they collapsed as if the strings of a puppet had been cut. Looking around, other zombies were similarly motionless. The enemy marks disappeared from the radar. Could it be because we defeated the boss controlling them? These guys are definitely strange. They seem to have intelligence, and they stopped moving after acquiring those extraordinary points. Well, at least I achieved my goal of wiping them out. Huh? I received a communication from God, and as I answered, God appearing on the screen seemed to be holding back laughter for some reason. What's wrong, God? Ah. Uh, S sorry. It's just a little inside joke. D don't worry about it. He <laughs> he. Well, I've always known that God's a bit peculiar, but the more I watch, the more unsettling it becomes. <clears throat> Congratulations, Elrena, on annihilating those zombies. Dotto. Um, thank you. M -m -m? Aren't you a bit underreacting to the praise? No, it's just. While watching the zombies, something felt off, like. Huh? Ah. This is bad. What's wrong? With a puzzled expression, God inquires, and I respond. There are a few people heading this way. They don't seem hostile, but I'd rather not draw attention, so we need to find a way to escape from here. Glancing at the UAV's thermal imagery, I can't discern specific individuals, but there seems to be a group of about five people approaching. In that case, leave it to me. First, stash those two UGVs and the UAV behind us. Understood. As instructed by God. I store away the two UGVs and the UAV in the storage bay. All set. All right then. Hup. As God speaks, my vision momentarily blurs, and when it clears, I find myself facing the wall right in front of me, startling me. We've arrived. Huh? Wait. This place is. Seeing a familiar wall in front of me, I glance around and realize exactly where I am. There's a gate over there. So, this is the capital after all. Why am I here? I'm the one who teleported you here. You could have at least warned me before teleporting. Seriously, that's not good for my heart. Haha, <laughs> sorry about that. By the way, it's only 8 p.m., so the inns are still open. You should rest for today. I'll give you your reward later. Ha. 
understood. As you say, God, I'll rest for today. Thank you for everything. Yeah, yeah, thank you too, lovely Elrina. Wah, ha ha ha. Good night. With that, God abruptly ends the communication. Ugh. What a. Annoying. God. After muttering to myself, I start walking towards the gate. Volume 02 Chapter 14 After finishing my communication with the deity, I emerged from the gate and arrived at the Silver Dragon Pavilion. Phew, I made it just in time. I'm back. I called out as I entered. Welcome back. I thought you weren't coming back today, the impertinent old lady remarked as she handed me the key. Seriously, hasn't her tone changed at all? Well, it was a bit of a day, but I managed to make it back by nine. I replied, whatever happens to you doesn't concern me, but don't go worrying your close ones, she said with a sigh. Alright, I understand. In this world, I don't have anyone close to me, but maybe she's worried about me in her own way. As I pondered, I accepted the key. The bath is ready, so get in before it cools down. Huh? The bath? Can I really take a bath? This inn has a bath. That's awesome. Thanks for the recommendation, Lady Ina. Dot. Wait, this isn't going to end up with me being billed later, is it? Seeing me suspicious, the old lady snapped at me. What are you suspecting? Offering baths for free is one of the selling points of this place. However, whether you borrow or buy soap, towels, and bathing sets from me, or bring your own, it's up to you. You can't enter the bath without bathing essentials. With that said, she took out a bathing set from under the counter and practically thrust it at me. A reused Randall bath set costs 5 copper coins, while a new one costs 8 copper coins. So, what'll it be? Is this old lady trying to make me buy something? Too bad, old lady. I have my own, so I'm good. I said as I opened my shop, summoned a bath set, sponge, and towel, and showed them to the old lady. I see you have your own. Then go ahead and take a bath quickly. Oh? Surprisingly straightforward response. It's a bit frustrating, actually. Big sister Tilda. Huh? Lima Chan clung to my stomach. No, she charged at me and then looked up at me. Welcome back. I'm home, Lima Chan. Normally, I should scold her, but seeing this smile, I can't help but forgive her. Is it because of maternal instincts? Jeez, Lima, you. The moment Lima Chan saw the old lady's stern face, she hid behind me. Seeing her action. The old lady stared at me. Stop, it's not my fault. Hey, you. For some reason, the old lady looked at me with a different, bewildered expression than before. Yes, what is it? It's convenient timing. Please take Lima to the bath. Wait, is this lady really entrusting Lima Chan to me? I'm going to bathe with Big Sister. Yay. Yay? Lima Chan, are you really excited about that? Um, shouldn't you let her parents do that? Lima's parents are not here right now. Oh. Did I just say something awful? Um. I. I spoke without thinking. I apologize. I bowed my head towards the old lady. Huh? What on earth are you imagining? Um. As I lifted my head, I was met with the old lady's fierce expression. If you're thinking that Lima's parents are dead, you're mistaken. I is that so? Yeah. They're both out working, and I'm just taking care of Lima. What a weird thing to imagine, honestly. Oh. So that was the reason. I see. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. I bowed my head again, and the old lady, placing her hands on her hips, continued to glare at me. HMPH. If you understand, hurry up and take Lima to the bath. It'll be troublesome if it's cold when I get in. Come on, big sis. Let's go quickly. Lima said, grabbing the hem of my clothes and pulling me along. All right, Lima. Lead the way to the bath please. Yes, Lima and I walked hand in hand towards the bath. Tilda? Tilda what a mess. We had agreed upon it among ourselves. Breaking the rules like this. In the pitch black night, a woman with her hood pulled deep over her head relied on the light of a lantern containing a magical gem as she ran, her frustration growing. That person truly should have been expelled from our organization. Bring him back. Though I apologize to him for saying so, if I find sold. I'll kill him. The others had agreed to this before coming here. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Huh? As she approached Sold's location, she somehow sensed a human presence, so she extinguished the light from the magical gem to avoid being noticed. They seem to be talking about something, but it's hard to see from here. I'll cast a transparency spell and get closer. Escape. And then, she confirmed her own disappearance. I'm just going to see what they're up to, but could it be that Sold lost? No, even if Sold who is said to be the weakest among us, faced a human, 
he shouldn't lose, unless it's a descendant of a hero or something. She cautiously approached, making sure not to be noticed, and when she reached a point where she could hear their conversation, she stopped and listened intently. So, have you found any of the others? No, only zombie corpses. I see. But what's really going on here? Captain Ger, I have no idea either. Captain Ger? So, Ger, the descendant of the knights of this country and a descendant of the hero, is here. But it doesn't seem like they're the ones who wiped out the zombies. I was told to investigate because there was a suspicious atmosphere here. But I never imagined something like this would happen. Right, Keith. What do you think? Captain Ger, what do you think? I want to hear what you think about who gathered the zombies and who destroyed them. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Captain Ger? Ger crossed his arms and began to speak his thoughts to Keith. These corpses lying around are probably demons. Captain Ger, you think the same way? Is this for real? Sold was killed. Who on earth did it? We can guess that the demons summoned the zombies to attack somewhere, but we don't know who killed them. Captain Ger, are you saying you don't know who killed them? Yeah. But amidst the terrible stench of these corpses, I can faintly smell a familiar scent. A smell? What do you mean? Ah, it's his smell. Captain Ger, who are you referring to? Well, it's Captain Tilda. What? Did someone just interrupt us? Our investigation here is done. Aces, how did it go? It's the same here. Just zombie corpses everywhere. But, I found some footprints I've never seen before. Footprints you've never seen before? The footprints are flat and continuous like a carriage wheel. And there are two of them, and they seem quite heavy. Flat carriage wheel tracks? Are there carriages that use flat wheels? Strange tracks, right? Did you find anything else? Well, near those wheel tracks, there were footprints of shoes. Aces, were those shoe prints unusual? Yes. They had a pattern I've never seen before. Captain Ger, it's confirmed now right? Sigh. After a look of dismay, Ger started giving instructions to the two. We'll confirm this with the locals tomorrow and ask for help in dealing with these zombies. Let's return to the capital first and request backup. Are we leaving the zombies? There's no need to worry about zombies turning into zombies again, so leaving them should be fine. Now, let's go call for Bajor. Understood. When Keith and Aza said so, they ran their horses in the direction where Bajor was thought to be. They've left. It's a relief they didn't find us, thanks to the strong stench of these zombie corpses. After saying this, she released the magic she had cast on herself. They seem to have sensed who caused this tragedy. Ha ha ha. I can't wait to meet whoever did this. Who on earth could it be? I'm looking forward to seeing them. With those words, she disappeared into the darkness of the night.